mournful chill hath settled upon the realm of Britain, for it hath endured a desolation of sixteen winters, bereft of a high king to guide and unite the land. The supreme collegium, entrusted with the sacred duty to anoint a rightful sovereign, hath faltered in its solemn task, lamented the whispers among the people. The nine surviving legates, their voices entangled in a web of protocol and precedence, hath failed to act. Alas, it seemeth the twilight of the collegium, as a potent body hath descended upon us. Throughout the land, tales abound of tribute paid, but alas, it floweth not into the coffers of a worthy ruler, but rather into the hands of invaders and those ill-fitted to the throne. The noble lords of Logris, once stalwart pillars of our realm, hath been laid low, though some secrets lie shrouded in mystery. Duke Ulfius, a survivor of many a harsh winter, findeth himself enshrouded in whispers of a shadowy alliance with the treacherous South Saxon. Duke Cornius, long in hiding, hath emerged from the shadows, and as he journeyed northward with exiles from Hantone, a fateful clash hath erupted at the border of East Saxon. In the wake of many a raid upon Carewind, key strongholds once lost hath been reclaimed. The Irish, like a relentless horde, wage war upon the lands of Gales, swarming in their thousands, a kind of vermin unleashed upon the fields. Norgales, in the throes of despair, offereth tribute to the mountain tribal leaders known as the Three Cadlus. These Cadlus, in their quest for willing souls to join their cause, dangle the allure of plunder. Yet, little plunder will be found in battling against the Irish. In the heart of Cambria, the kingdoms of Scavalon and Cameliard convene beneath the banners of peace, a meeting graced by the presence of the illustrious kings, Leo de Grants and Nintelliad. King Idris of Cornwall hath need of willing souls, and the castellan of Castle Dimlock in Tintagel doth seek volunteers for his cause to defend against the king of Cornwall. King Cerdic of Wessex, ever the ambitious warlord, raiseth a formidable host and seeketh the aids of mercenaries, a fleet of ships, a foreboding harbinger of strife, hath also been amassed under his banner. In the fabled lands of Salisbury, the great marshal's tournament hath been postponed for news of turmoil along their western borders hath reached their ears. The castle Woodhouse, a bastion once held by the late Prince Maddock, and a hoary hillfort of Westford Castle, are said to have fallen under the dominion of mercenary armies. Yet the superstitious whisper of faithful in giants, laboring to reclaim what was lost in the days of Uther's invasion, of the Magician King's Summerland.
All right, we're live. Uh, welcome to another episode of Salisbury Anarchy, year 497, uh, where we deal with uh, the grand melee. This is kind of the, the melee here is really Britain's first melee that we're going to see. So you guys actually get to be the, you know, we, we get to uh, destroy the virginity of Britain in tourneys. Yay. <laughs> Um, Goodness gracious! That's an interesting way to Colin, put it. This is how I bring you onto the stream. Don't you feel <laughs> super grateful? Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> consistent with every stream I've been on. So <laughs> perfect. Uh, we have Colin with us tonight. Uh, Colin, do you want to introduce yourself? The crowd. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Colin, formerly Colin, Mister Cool Guy. Uh, I am in a Pendragon stream uh, on Eric Volgaris's channel. And um, I play, have played on that channel uh, Sir Gareth de Winterborn Gunnett, his daughter Acewin, and lately his grand grandson Archibald. And uh, yeah, yeah. So you've gotten a chance to go through the uh, the full scale. Um... Yeah, we are in the tournament period. Uh, so we have we've blown past all the, the juicy, moist anarchy meat and uh, are into the the refined crunching of the romance and tournament periods. Love right. those meat tiles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Use the book of beasts, if you can tell. Um, all right, uh, we'll we'll do some introductions of our regulars here. We'll start with you, Thomas. Hello, my name is Thomas, and I'm playing Sir Edric of Winterborn Stoke, uh, current leader of the uh, Loyalist uh, gang faction. Loyalist gang, indeed. Loyal Mark. gang, rise up. Loyalist gang. Loyalist gang. Hello, I am Mark, aka the Cat's Meow, and today I will be playing Sir Florence uh, of Idmiston and the Barony of Axe. Of kind of Idmiston. <laughs> kind of Idmiston. Yeah. Sometimes um, the Barony of Axe. Yeah. And Liam. Hi, everybody. Uh, I am Liam. I am playing Sir Virgil of Durnford. And uh, Virgil's going to support somebody. Most likely. We'll see. We're going to see where this is going to go. But I'm super excited to have our, our, our lovely guest here today. Awesome. Me too. And just to, just a note on this, um, Colin. So I've had yes. Pendragon uh, on my shelf since like fourth edition. And it just sat there collecting dust. I could never figure out how to play it. Something just seemed weird. Like, I love virtues. I love passions. But I couldn't quite figure out. The rest of it seemed really old school and clunky to me. And then mm -hmm. uh, I actually got interested in it again. Came across well, Eric's stream. And, uh, yeah, you guys uh, convinced me that my indie gaming brain can play this game. So, that was, yes. that was good. Yeah. Very happy to hear that. Eric is uh, very good at getting people uh, into new new games, new systems. Uh, he's got a real talent for it. Uh, and I think what you just said, your indie brain, like Greg Stafford's work anticipates so much in the indie scene. Just low-key, but if you look at it, it's all there, and it's very not D&D, &D, which is it's just very cool. I couldn't figure out why all the game designers that, like, I... I love the games of kept praising this one. It kept, it blew my mind. I'm like, I, I just don't see it. But then, yeah, it mm -hmm. takes playing it, I think. All right. Yeah. With that, gentlemen, let's go ahead and dive <coughs> in here. Uh, let's see. I guess I need some kind of music here. Forgot that vibe. And while I'm doing that, uh, so this is our county of Salisbury. Uh, and we're going to, I think, dive right into what should be maybe some feasting. Uh, so we're going to start it off with the familiar vibe before we go into very confusing, um, more confusing uh, rules. And that being uh, something we've never done before, which is a grand melee. So let's, uh, let's move over to the feasting screen. And uh, we play very similar to what you guys do. In fact, I didn't know that you guys house ruled geniality. I just went off the assumption that that the ten geniality was a was a thing. So that's what we've yeah. been doing since the beginning. So, which maybe it's oh. a house rule done right, you know? Yeah, I th I think it probably a house rule done right because 
all the indications I've gotten are that they thought you were doing a lot of rounds of feasting, even for the small ones. Um, but, yeah. you know, I don't know. Sure. All right, let's start with some app rolls, folks. Go from there. Well, yes. Uh, I will be using my valet and his fashion skill to do nothing. Um, <laughs> glad I got him. You handsome, so... Yeah, but I could be pay? more handsome. Oh, no. apparently I crit. Oh. Never mind. No, <laughs> Straight hell up. yeah. Um, um, Mr... Bob, sorry, one second, Thomas. Um, this is the oh, yeah. same year as the year that we were in last episode, yes? The very last episode, yeah, where you weren't really in Salisbury. Uh, I still have boils. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that a temporary thing? Was that a... Yeah, it's it's for mm. one year. I can lance them, but mm. I might lose a permanent appearance um, right. if I do to get rid of them sooner. Oh, well. All right, I succeed. It's good to know. Different channel, same quality roles. Same quality. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so starting strong. Yeah. And that's the see. way. No, oh, Thomas, you were a success as well, right? Yep. There we go. All right. That is our, our layout of things, and we start at the top of round. So we're uh, let's do two rounds. I'd like to like to make you know. Get us to stretch our limbs a bit here and get used to the feasting. So we'll, we'll start with that. Uh, who is not here? Aethling, Sled, and Kinry. So ignore them. I was I was going to yeah. ask because yeah. they're very very notable guests. No no no, forget them. Uh, everyone else, forget who. Yeah, exactly. I exactly. uh, will start at the top with you, Florence. Okay. Uh, Florence is going to do what he does best. Um, which is can't pull a card. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it's really well. Some things he I... does better than others. Um, I think he is going to spend his time uh, living it up and drinking. So I am going to attempt an indulgence roll. Perfect. Getting sloshed before the fighting. <laughs> That is Pretty a man much. who breathes confidence. It's a failure, but... Uh, what does the failure do on the feasting? I, don't, I think I just don't get anything. Yeah. The sun's about right. Yeah. Okay. Alright, well, you're you're enjoying yourself. Maybe, maybe it's a matter of Sir Florence deciding that he needs to not be in bad shape for the fighting. Yeah. Is it... It is so. This this is kind of the opening feast the night before. Next morning, you'll be you'll be in the feast. Yeah, or in the uh, he's no carb loading. To, yeah, carb no loading. one wants to do a tournament <laughs> while hungover. Oh. Speaking of which, let's see what we're dealing with. Roast baby Roast swan. Roast baby swan. Baby swan. <laughs> That's fucked up. And glazed yeah. eggs to cap it <laughs> off as <laughs> well. <laughs> glazed <laughs> eggs. Someone oh, yeah. hates of, birds. It's, yeah, <laughs> someone hates birds. Uh, I, I imagine it's like two warring chefs. One of them going like, "Aha, we got we got the birds when they were really young," and then another coming in with a basket going, "Not young enough." <laughs> yeah. One's like, "I've made my famous artichokes," and then the other one's like, "I stuffed them." <laughs> Brilliant. All right. So is that Thomas then? Sorry, I'm muted. Edric, you're up. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going bantering to do along. One... <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do one thing first. Um, although I do have a question. Would I know on the offset which is the larger of the two factions? Uh, the Regalists or the Born Identity? Born, it's not the Born Identity. Uh, you, lo <laughs> you lose... Uh, no. Um, so, <laughs> they're comparable. You don't know exactly. They're both. I, I think they're both listed as large. So. Oh, so I think you mean the regalists. The regalists. Regalists. Yes. Um. In that case, uh, I am going to prepare for the second round, uh, where I will do some investigating by drawing some cards because I like to draw cards. Yeah, that's fair. All right, let's see it. See what you got. 
First card, who are you? Uh, second, a man of all seasons. And the third, a pagan gift. Oh, man. <laughs> um, no matter what religion my characters are, the opposition loves me. They love you. Um, okay. So, who are you? An unknown lady asks you to entertain her during the feast. Uh, upon uh, succeeding on Recognize, I uh, uh, notice that she's an important lady. Um, a man for all seasons. I impress the other guests with my consummate knowledge, and I can keep the card. And whenever I check a skill or trait, I gain a knowledge counter. And when I depart the feast, I get plus two for each knowledge counter. It's only a two-round feast. Um, it's anarchy. Um, I am married. I want my child and my wife to survive. If it makes sense, I would like to take pig gift. I just don't know who no, among this crew would be willing to give it. You know, during the prologue when we were learning the game, it made it was comical to have your yes, pagan knight yes. continually get Fair bothered enough. by the the priests. But yeah, otherwise technically this time you're, it doesn't make sense. Well, you're technically yeah. excluded. That's what that card. It's like only if you're yeah. that, that religion. So. Got you. In that case, I take a pick of these two. Um, I know it. I might as well just uh, keep a man of all seasons. All right. All right. I Is might just get one. Oh, sorry, you go. Just one geniality. Yeah. Yep, just one. All right. Cruising through this one. And. Perfect. That brings us to Virgil. Virgil time. Um, Virgil. Uh, <laughs> I I gotta check something on his uh stuff here. Uh, okay. I can make this work. Um, I'm going to attempt an intrigue roll versus Lady Bronwyn, my sister-in-law. Um, can I impassion with love of family for this? Uh, yes. All right. Well, depends on what uh, you're doing, I think. I what think he's going to try to convince her that it's important that the two of them show unity right now. Okay. Um, and we'll, I, I, we'll see how it progresses, but that's the intention that he's coming with. I will support that. Yeah, you can make that rule. That is a success. Okay. Yes. That's the first 15 success on a passion I've gotten with Virgil, I think, ever. So that's fun. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's a plus five. All right, so Bronwyn, who's currently shuttled off to another manor um, after her husband passed, um, is uh, been really cold towards Virgil. Uh, she also kidnapped her own children. Yes. <laughs> And I don't. The uncle like doesn't that. find them uh, <laughs> stuffed rather than the uh, artichoke. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I need so, those. I need those. Virgil does have a bit of a reputation. So. Uh, what? <laughs> not a murdering kind, but you know. <laughs> no, Virgil's uh, fine. Okay, so yeah, you succeed. Intrigue. Um, what is? Uh, do you want to play it out a little bit here? I think so. Do? Just just yeah. a little bit, if that's okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, so a Virgil at, at pretty early on at the feast will kind of like I think I think what it looks like is she's like eating and like somebody passes in front of her and all of a sudden Virgil's kind of like there, you know, <laughs> and he goes, yeah. uh, "Lady Bronwyn, you've been avoiding me." Oh, sorry about that. I clicked on the wrong thing. Okay. <laughs> um, Bronwyn says. Have I? Yes, you have. I was hoping that we could take an opportunity to talk. I admit I haven't been very prudent in pursuing you, but I also felt that it was necessary that you understand that there are no hard feelings. I and felt you deserved your space. I think this is a, a moment where Karanog has like gone off to get something to eat. So that's the intrigue success is is allowing you this minute. Like grabbing yeah. grabbing yeah. that time. Yeah, yeah, that works for me. Um Bronwyn smiles. Well, um 
Things are complicated in Salisbury. It's hard to know friend from foe, from kin. Indeed. And yet, it's strange to me that you felt that you would have to doubt my commitment to the house, to the line. I understand why you fled, but I don't understand why you didn't speak to me about it beforehand. That would defeat the purpose. I suppose. My brother was uh, a pillar of the community here. A lot of knights here saw him as a um, beacon of sorts, as he wanted to be. Not necessarily in the same way that he wanted to be. I think it's important that we show unity in these times, even as we've separated into factionalism. It's important to know that Durnford's strongest families are put together properly. Don't you agree, Lady Bronwyn? What would you propose, and who would you propose we support? Sir Edric? I'd prefer myself, but it seems that Edric is the best choice for Logris. For Salisbury. You intend to ride under your own banner? <laughs> I don't think so. My odds are not... strong. I'm a prideful man, but I am not a fool, Lady Bronwyn. And my honor dictates that I pick the best person for the job regardless of what I personally gain from it. Do you understand? I hear your words. I have no reason to defy the loyalists. Everyone else seems to be after their own agendas. I think it's wrong that Perrin's eldest doesn't get to see his siblings or his mother very often. Should you so desire, I will make sure that you know that you are comfortable should you want to visit them until we sort out our disagreement. You have my word as a knight. She nods slow. You can tell there's a look of... Um... Uh, absolutely triggers her her desire to see her her kid, but she holds it back despite uh, that want. You can sense it. You pass the intrigue. So you see yeah, it. she's she's smart. <laughs> and it's at that point I think Karenog starts coming back, and he he kind of puffs up a little bit as he walks past you, Sir Virgil. Sir Karenog, Durnford has missed you. I ride for your brother's memory now. Shame. I thought you rode for his son once he comes of age. No matter. I understand. Honor is a fluid thing sometimes. Enjoy the feast and the competition, Lady Bronwyn. I would be happy to have your ear whenever you'd be willing to offer it. As I said, Durnford, Durnford is stronger in unity. And he, he kind of nods and starts to make his way away. Perfect. All right. That brings us to Below the Salt, where Gareth hath landed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think uh, I originally I was going to like launch myself into some intrigue. But I'm below the salt, so <laughs> I drew cards instead. Hold on, let, let um, me check one thing before before we do. 17. Now, you have a wife. And if I recall, you typically would raise your fashion, would you not? In that point? You know, actually, that's a good point. <laughs> Does that I, bring I, you... I, I, uh, you're two away. 
from yeah uh, yeah i think i traditionally max out spending for um jewelry uh you know to to boost the appearance for it. so i go one past what would be a crit if i get the plus three all right so that would bring us that would bring you to near the salt then we're gonna adjust okay that. i think it's a more interesting story so let's do that that's fair yeah. um i still like the uh kind of simplicity of the cards i got um one of the reasons I wasn't pressed about being uh, below the salt is it's all below the salt feels here. Uh, drinking wine, uh, stuffing your face, and arm wrestling. Um, <laughs> That's fair. Of them, the of classics. them, yeah, of them, I like a test of strength for Gareth in particular because it's exactly the kind of thing he would do to like arm wrestle knights. So it gets an idea of what their sword arm is like. Like, how strong are they really? <laughs> Noted. Noted. <laughs> Anyone you'd like to uh, to identify as this uh, this knight that's boasting? Anyone that you think would be uh, someone worth uh, Gareth's time right here? Yeah, I was actually hoping to arm wrestle someone from where? What are they called? The... Swan's hundred, so not Staterius, but like one of one of his guys that I know is going to be on the field. Yeah, you know one of Staterius is like uh, right right hand men, not by name necessarily, but uh, you do hear him boasting about uh, Swan's preparation. Okay, yeah, I'll wait until he's just within earshot and and make some casually absurd brag about my own strength to set him off. And uh... <laughs> all right. Uh, oh, I, I like this guy already. <laughs> shall I the, shall I make the roll? Yeah. I'll I'll uh, see how let's see how his uh, strength is. Oh, perfect. Yeah. This guy's a bodybuilder. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. He's strong. Yeah. Mine's a fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you had even odds. That's yeah. That's true. Do you want to impassion okay. yourself with anything? Oh. Uh, no. It was, in many ways, not his intent. It, winning oh, was wonderful. not the point. Yeah, that's fair. You're getting Here's the, the other reason. <clears throat> Here's the other reason I really like this one for Gareth. Because if I win, great, I get something. If I lose, he starts going through <laughs> everyone else. Ah. <laughs> the card gets passed along, so... I think I've initiated this this Change. dick measuring contest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so very fun, man. With this, and all of a sudden, yeah, you see people lining up for this guy. Who I think you know, it's a it's a relatively short contest. Uh, Gareth puts yeah. up a bit of a, a try, but this guy is just probably like size eighteen, size, you know, strength eighteen. Yeah, just a real beast of a just man. enough so I don't embarrass myself, and that that that's good enough. So, who are you giving the card to, uh, yeah. if anyone? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Um, Ooh. I mean, I, I think I do want to just pass it right up to... Ver it's going to be Virgil or Edric. It's like, that obvious. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, if I had seen... Like, his... Um, uh, sorry, I'm still trying to make sure I get the names right. It's all good. Uh, yeah, so I think having seen Virgil, like, have that moment or or go off and to do something social, I think that's, like, on the radar. It's like, okay, like, they're if they're not interested in this buffoonery, I'm, I'm going to see how they react to the buffoonery. <laughs> Yeah, cool. I'll take it. Absolutely. Perfect. Does that happen right. in the same round? No, it happens on the next round. So instead yeah. of their thing, they have to play that card and uh, Gareth gets minus one geniality. What's minus one? It is it is minus one for losing, yeah. Okay. yeah. No, it's it's minus one for passing it on. Oh, that's nothing, right. But, no. yeah. yeah. But that's important it's, to you, right? It's, uh, such, it's such a... Um, load off to be playing a character that 
or playing a character who once again is not super invested in being perceived as a good guy. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yep. Let Archie, current guy, life of the party. Everyone loves him, and he wants everyone to love him. This That's is true. this is Gareth, the Dauntless, who was uh, mm. come and have a go kind of guy. He is unable to be daunted. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, that that would be a bit of a reputation you would know, as he has fallen uh, to. So many times already in in battle uh, with wounds that would kill a man, and they haven't killed Gareth. So, ooh, that's fun. Yeah. I once got hit in the face with an axe, and it got me this hideous scar. I'm now appearance sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> He's downright ugly now. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna roll to the top of round two. But before we do that, I think Lady Ellen. Um, Steps forward at this point, uh, Robert beside her, and Jenna to her other side. Uh, she says, Knights of Salisbury, tomorrow we take the field, not against an enemy, but to determine he who will lead us in battle. I ask that you all enjoy tonight and you prepare yourselves to the victor. And she raises her glass. And uh, there are many that raise their glass, uh, most of them pretty focused on uh, the outcome of, of what they want here. <laughs> Do you all raise to your the glass? victor? Um, yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Florence would raise his glass and say, To victory! <laughs> hey. Virgil? Glass raised? Absolutely. Yeah. And he's saying it right, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Brings us to round two, back to Florence. All right. <sighs> now Florence is going to do the other thing he does best. Uh... Make an absolute fool of himself by flirting with the the staff. That's the way. Ah, uh, okay. The old widower here. Let's see yep. how this goes. Florence is someone that uh, basically like uh, landed on a horseshoe early on in this campaign. Ma ended up uh, with a random card and just what made sense. Ended up meeting a baroness and marrying her. Um, but she did recently pass in childbirth. So that mm -hmm. is. Uh, that is his recent. That's tragic. a shame. Uh, yeah. Good news is, single again. Single again. Uh, single and ready to mingle. Uh, Florence is going to use his utmost to be hospitable, invoking his hospital his hospitality passion. Okay, I'll give you that. Success. It's a plus ten to this. An episode of the Real Housewives of Arthuriana. Pretty much. Really, Florence in a nutshell. Yet I rolled like shit, apparently. Uh, that's gonna keep happening. Well, it's a success. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you were just flirting with the, the staff, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, not a noble. Okay. No, probably, no. Probably he... shouldn't have given you hospitality for that one, but that's okay. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, um, Wouldn't have changed much. Uh, no, exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I don't. Is there anything particular you want to add to that point, or just kind of not particularly? I think it's kind of Florence's drawing attention in a way to have everyone's eyes on him by doing things that would normally be, uh, what's the word, blase? Like faux pas? Is that what you're aiming? Faux pas. I guess that would be the word. Yeah. You definitely aren't invoked with hospitality, then. <laughs> Alright, then. Uh, yeah. Um, but that doesn't really matter. I Especially above this salt, I'd see you get a little bit more attention for doing those things, too. Um, not good attention, in some cases. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. It's Florence. Florence does what Florence well, does. Florence. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That brings us to Edric. 
Um, Edric is very possibly going to do a little bit of a sneaky. Um, what purpose does Bishop Roger hold within Salisbury? Or rather, what position, I should say. Uh, so, Bishop Roger... Dare say he's the bishop. He's the bishop. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was going to see if <laughs> I had anything extra bishop. added. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no extras added there. Let me just see one thing. I believe he's someone that uh, is right out of the book. Um. So what you know from him is he was uh, he was involved in helpful kind of when you were on trial uh, yeah, for he helping helpful. Merlin. Yeah. Um, so he's wealthy and he's a bit more worldly as far as like, uh, as far as the clergy go. Um, he has holdings in the church, um, uh, including Amesbury. So, um, he's well-educated, read, uh, widely read, influential. So he's a bit he's a bit more of a politicky uh, uh, British Christian um, bishop. That's my kind of bishop. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to approach him, and uh, if I will show my cards, uh, I would like to approach him to try and sway him into um, supporting Lady Ellen in uh, various, shall we say, administrations and. Uh, Speech is the wrong word, but essentially uh, making an announcement to try and sway the more spiritual knights from uh, the larger factions to try and bleed into the loyalists. Uh, and we'll see if that uh, gets accomplished through roleplay. Are you muted? Uh, Are you muted? Bob? Yeah, you're muted. Roger that. Okay, uh, give me oh, an entry uh, test. Absolutely. Uh, and it looks like Colin uh, went to uh, let his dog out. Do you be back in a bit? Who, 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 who? Ah, here you go. Um, uh, success. Okay, and then uh, let's, let's play this out real, real slightly. What let's is do it. Um, I think it's it's during when uh, Florence is doing his, uh, you know, life and soul of the party kind of ha-ha um, uh, flirting and uh, perhaps even, uh, depending on how he does it, like playing an instrument uh, for one of the servers. Um, I think around the edge of the crowd uh, stalks Edric, um, eyes set on Bishop Roger, uh, and he will swoop towards him. Ah, Sir Edric. Your Holiness. I hear you it replaced uh, Sir Leo at the head of uh, the Loyalists. That is correct. We spoke and we agreed that uh, I would try my hand. And indeed, due to the nature of the tourney, the best man will hopefully win in the end, so long as the faction remains triumphant. Indeed. It has been some time since we last spoke, and you did me a good turn then. I would wonder if I could bend your ear about a matter near and dear to my heart, and the heart of all good Salisbury men. That matter being? That matter being support for the Loyalists. When I look around the room, I see many people with varying agendas, and while that is no great sin, when a land is surrounded by enemies on all sides, they must be united, or they will fall. Uh, well, if you speak of the loyalty of my influence to the lady and the soon-to-be Lord Robert, you can count on it. It's not my place to play in um, these worldly endeavors. It is his rightful place uh, to become Earl one day. A title of course. gifted to him by Uther. And indeed, uh, that was never in doubt. What was and is, is the loyalty and, shall we say, piety of some of those who have joined opposing factions for more worldly reasons. 
that of wanting to protect the rivers or indeed seek glory by following a... I think the word is strong man. I wondered if you could use influence of yours to turn those who have God in their heart and goodness who have perhaps been swayed by their pride to turn them towards loyalty and a united realm. Uh, if this is something that is impossible, then please forgive me. But I feel I would do a disservice to the realm if I did not ask. I have and will continue to speak for the young Earl's right and Lady Ellen's um, regency. However, I don't think that I can be of much help for tomorrow morning. If you're looking for more nights for tomorrow, I'm afraid you'd be better finding that support yourself. Perhaps. It is not support for merely myself, but... I want them to know what disunity is like. I want them to know what a struggle it is when disparate factions cleave apart from each other. However, if it is uh, not something that can be done, then I understand. I figured I'd try. Indeed. You speak of loyalty, but I happen to hear rumor that Sir Florence himself will not be riding alongside you, despite your long history. It was a surprise to me. Sir Florence wanted something, and I did not know what it was. He would not tell me what it was, and I could not in all good faith promise him the sun and the moon if my loyalties were elsewhere. He understands that, both as a knight of Idmiston and the Baron of Axe. I hope he does, at least. We have not spoken since. Sir Edric, if I might be so bold, you're... You are the superior swordsman here. Oh, One might you. say even the superior knight. But I think that you do not invoke the hearts of others with your loyalty to your lord. I see. Your actions I can be not... seen at times as selfish, or at least self-involved. All that I have done, I have done in the name of services greater than myself, causes beyond one man. But I understand how it can look different to those of others. If you were to give me a piece of advice, how might I stir the hearts of those who have already turned their heads from me? For tomorrow, it might be too late, but it seems in many cases that you put your family and its own future uh, above your loyalty, dear Lord, in your sworn oath. I can't recall a situation where that happened. He said, conveniently ignoring the time that he marched into his liege lord's castle, mm. like sword drawn. <laughs> he smiles. He says, you are a good knight, Sir Edric. I do not question that. I'm simply being truthful with you about how you might be perceived. And I thank you for your honesty. I will do what I can. That is all I ask. And thank you very much. I understand, indeed, that it may be too late for some hearts and minds to be swayed. But I have done what I can. And the rest, indeed, is up to God and me. Right. We're going we're gonna to shift past that just so we don't spend too much time on, on that one point. But you, Absolutely. you got what yeah, you needed. Sorry, it will have an influence. No, you're good. You're good. All right, we're going to dive into Virgil next. Virgil! Uh, Virgil's going to arm wrestle, I suppose. 
That was uh, uh, probably really wording. quickly. <laughs> um, I get two geniality from that round, success on the thing, and also I get. Uh, it'll be at the end of the feast, but I'll get more geniality from the, the uh, man of all seasons card. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, Virgil's right, time arm wrestle, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, let's see it. All right, we've been okay, waiting for this. So, da, 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 we gotta give uh, we gotta give this guy a name since he's already like strength pose. Yeah, we. I need to know who this man is. What, how do you? Sli dog sli or you sli dog? Sli, you sly dog. Sly <laughs> dog. You oh, sly or, dog. Or it's Olwen, uh, the fourth Olwen. <laughs> no, we'll go. With, we'll go with Sly dog in this way. Ooh, cruel fifteen like that. Ooh. Virgil. Let's see how he do. He's right. better at it than me, but I rolled pretty close to my to my he threshold, did. so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh, hey. Ooh it's a it's barn a burner. Indeed. Back and forth you guys go. And finally uh, Virgil puts him down. A bit of a you know, what we get one of those, uh, what was that movie with Sly Stallone there? Is the <laughs> armor? <laughs> oh, uh, the Predator, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think you predator. mean Sly Stallone. Uh, Sly Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, neither, needless to say, uh, after a long fought arm wrestling match, you bring him down. And, uh, when, and when, it, when he does, yeah, when he does, I think Virgil kind of like leans close and goes, Remember that tomorrow. Yes. All right. I think we have someone we need to remember here. Uh, remember that tomorrow, whoever you are. No, not important. <laughs> we'll never see him again. <laughs> Would be He'll so never see funny. Me again. Would be so, so funny if he kills me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so Gareth sitting back, watching the arm wrestling. Um, seeing who won uh, and identifying it's like, okay, that's Virgil for, uh, backing Edric of the Loyalists. Um, I have a little bit here about uh, Staterius. Do I yeah. have do I have any sense of whether his, fa his factional lean is going one way or the other or is it, are they self-interested? Yeah, you get the sense that Satirius is a bit more self-interested uh, than anything. Okay. And his ties to, you know, his own barony is based out of uh, Silchester. So it is um, many, much like all the other baronies that have interest in internally here. His is, uh, you know, comes from the Atrebates in Silchester. He has, a, he has one um, hundred here in Salisbury called Mil Milkfield, which is... Uh, his mm -hmm. and then he has a barony and, and a castle in Silchester. Okay, okay. So he is in some ways an outsider to Salisbury. Very much so. Okay, okay. Uh, like that. Like I can I can work with that. Virgil, that's one geniality for you. Just to make sure I get that. Uh, I think. Yep. One two? for the round, and then no, because the uh, you don't get you don't get anything from the the card itself beyond two glory, which I added to you. Um, you, you do oh, get one yes, from being glory. Near yeah. Soul. So just one geniality. You're right. Two glory. Uh, so much. It adds up. Yeah. <laughs> All you have to do is that five thousand more times, and yeah. then we're gonna we're gonna rock this place. Hell yeah! All right, that does bring us to uh, Sir Gareth. All right, uh, and to clarify in my notes, so uh, right now Lady Ellen is acting Countess uh, Robert, the son, uh, Jenna, the daughter, or Jenna, the daughter. daughter. Yeah. Okay. Jen Jenna's okay. like a tween, so, basically, at this age. I was gonna follow up with how how old she is. Okay, so like not marrying, but that's on the horizon that's a couple years uh exactly. where you're they're gonna be start thinking about that which means it's when gareth starts thinking about it um i would like to do uh an intrigue to kind of see if i can get 
a sense of whether the countess is thinking about that at all you know if she's if if she's talking to anyone cuz i i know from ellen that there's a, uh, or elaine there's at least one person who might be hounding for uh, a marriage into the er- earldom but um Garrus instinct is like she may be like completely on the defensive here and trying to fend off any of these marriage stuff so it's like are we ta- is she receptive is she thinking about it and if she's thinking about it is she thinking about it as an opportunity or playing defense okay very much uh why don't we why don't we do an intrigue test and you can add your oh you're at zero genial okay uh technically i'm at negative one gtl <laughs> Well, you got one, and then no, you no, lost you one. Get, you yeah, get yeah one you got one. one. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Good. We Gucci. There we go. There we go. Okay, so um, Gareth, uh, you're you're kind of in a position where you're near the soul, and you end up amongst some of the loyalists, uh, specifically some of the household knights uh, of the former Roderick. Sir Bar, Sir Leo, and Hibno. They seem to be standing by each other and talking. Um, mm. How do you want to approach this? Like, how would you uh, inquire? Well, so I'm going to try and... Uh, two birds, one stone type situation. Um, I'm going to, like, kind of talk, uh, like, offhand, be like, I don't want to... Have you heard Stateris talking about marriage so early, as though some sort of settled thing? Uh, he's like talking to someone as he's near them, and then like splits off. It's like, oh, hello, gentlemen. Uh, they they turn to you. Uh, we'll say you're like beside Leo. Leo nods. He's got a bit of a. You can tell he's not necessarily super pumped about uh, being relegated down to not leading the loyalists, right? So, mm-hmm. uh, but he looks to you and says, ah, Gareth, have you been? Well, you know how it goes, the seasons turn and we remain. So says your house. Tell me, friend, what do you think tomorrow will play like? And how are, are the Knights of the Born ready? I expect it to be messy tomorrow. <laughs> if if I'm being honest, I think there are a lot of people in this room who feel as though they're holding a leash uh, and have quite forgotten what it's like when dogs get off those leashes. Those leashes are not leading anything tomorrow. Tomorrow, well, flexibility has its place on the battlefield. As for the born, we stand ready for our own. As we've always done, I dislike the ambitious prattling of some knights. Not that I'm going to name names. And saying that, he's like looking at them to see who they're looking at. Who he who they think he's referring to. Yeah. You see, uh so for Leo, he looks at um he looks at Edric. He looks at Satirius, and he looks at Florence. Um, Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I'm going to push a little bit, play up Satirius. I think at this point I've zeroed in. Satirius represents a a threat to Salisbury that Gareth does not particularly truck with. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. So he's, he, he's going to, to be like, well, you know. I think the most important part, whatever happens, is that it's Salisbury that's that's important. And uh, I, I know we've invited in some <laughs> those who are not from Salisbury. And at that, he'll, like, flick his look to Staterius, hoping that Leo catches that. Like, hey, you know, the, the, the petty... The, the squabble is between... I mean... Uh, there's the, the and he'll name some of like just the meaningless kind of um, feuds. Uh, be like you know all that is something we should resolve ourselves without outside interference. 
Those who'd swoop in on a bloodline. Animal stuff. Indeed. This uh, county has never been more vulnerable with the late Earl's death. And I, I see that many make plays because they know they can against young Robert. And, and the lady's hand. And he looks over to Satirius again. Yeah. I'll be honest, the thing that wakes me up in the middle of the night is the thought that there are so many people here who are playing a game, playing to win, without much thought about what they're going to do if they win. I mean, the hot-headed... Uh, it's, 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 it's commendable, really. We, uh, we should commend those like Sir Edric comes to mind. Uh, but... when they get the thing that they want is I, 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 I wonder sometimes whether it crosses their mind at all I think in many of the knight's cases they lead factions that only suit them personally they are skilled and capable but their hearts are torn between desires that do not add to the stability of Salisbury. And that, indeed, is my fear. Yes. Well, I take to heart that we have the similar fear, then. You are an admirable man in morality, in, in act and action. And I think, um, I think it would be tragedy for us to come to blows tomorrow. I understand. I hope then that it does not come to that. But for now my um, many would question my loyalty if I were to walk away from where my where my sworn oath has been given, and that is the defense of the lady and her children. Indeed. Indeed. Um, rather, I think perhaps it's not about forsaking the lady's side, but um, not standing shoulder to shoulder with those unworthy of your shoulders. <laughs> One may protect the lady, and not protect those who might disrupt the safety of this. I have had wine. I apologize. I'm taking up entirely too much of your time. You can so, tell you planted a seed, though, there. That's, that's perfect. Yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just be like, yeah, it's like you don't gotta, you don't gotta do anything. You just have to not do something. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. All right. Uh, that does uh, bring us to the end of the feast. Uh, and not that it'll matter, but we're going to go ahead and give Gareth his geniality for that, that round. <laughs> the Winterborns the have two things in common. The name <laughs> and also the fact that they're big picture schemers. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. Let's see here. Just going to pull up. Uh, something real quick and we will cut over uh, so the following morning and I'm going to push this along here a little bit too so we can get to this properly we're going to cut it over to the tournament itself uh, as all the factions begin to gather under relative banners oh yeah so this represents uh, everyone who's here, and uh, this, I'm going to do my best to kind of move this along gracefully, but, uh, mm. you know, it, it's, it's a lot. Um, so the the short of it is, uh, I think all of you have super low tourney, which is how the game's designed for pre boiking era. Why don't we test tourney, though? Uh, the kick memory. Yeah. Uh for for Colin, I think you actually like. I think Winterborn 
uh, Gunna actually has a tournament field, right? Don't they? Like, didn't you create uh, like a makeshift one, or is that Childerton that did that? Uh, that was. <laughs> I th no, I think I did because I got it almost a year or two after Irwin had had built his. Um, it was just like, oh yeah, that is a really good idea. Uh, I see here I have a passion loyalty born, which I would like to roll. Okay. Don't like Mark's early critical there. <laughs> Whoa! All it's right. the only one I'm gonna get. Uh, uh, you can you that can make your test plus on ten. Yes, for, so for Exalted. Okay. All right, that's a pass on tourney. All right. Okay, so uh, the, the tourney bonus is going to add to what happens in the following rounds here. But effectively, the way this is going to play out, and both Gareth and, and uh, Florence are aware of this, is it's going to be... Uh, it's it's going to start with like a mock battle. It's two sides, and they will not start the tournament until the sides are even enough to make it a, a good starting point. Otherwise, it wouldn't really play out the way they need it to. Uh, but as far as who's who's going where, that's actually uh, that's actually going to depend on what happens in these following moments. So um, we're going to get all the factions to make some rolls here and we're going to see where you all land. Uh, in the case of, uh, is, think of this like an, the way initiative plays out in a lot of uh, role-playing games. Um, your faction size is going to be a modifier, as is uh, whether or not you succeeded on tourney. And then finally, your glory, the, the first number of your glory, so if you're 6,000 glory, you'll get a plus 6. So, uh, let's do this uh, with a couple of the bigger groups first. We're going to go to Robert's Loyalists. Um, your size is 6, so d20 plus 6, plus your glory, which I think is 7,000 now. That's right. And then uh, you failed, so just the plus 6 plus 7. Got you. All right, so uh, just d20 plus 13? Uh, yes, correct. Okay, cool. Uh, 18, bad roll. Okay. Uh, we're going to do the same with the Born because they're a big group as well. Um, and uh -oh. before we do that, I will do the Regalists here. Yep. Uh, plus five for passing tourney? Uh, correct. Plus five for passing okay. tourney, tourney, plus your glory, and then you're a size six as well. Okay. Oh. Okay. So doing some shifts here. Moving this down, moving this over. Actually, that might be 32. Nope, that's 33. Good. Okay, so we're going to see where the axe shifts to now. Barony of the axe. Mark, uh, you're going to be rolling with your... I think your glory is 7,000, is it? Or no? Yep. So 7,000. D20 plus 7, plus uh, you succeeded at the tourney roll, so plus 5. I crit on the tourney roll. Does that change anything? Oh, you did. You did. Plus 10. It would be then. fair to give him a plus 10, yes. Yeah. 10 plus... What was the size bonus? Uh, 2. 2. And then... Plus 7. No one's a bigger fan of Florence than me, but please roll low. <laughs> I put the wrong command in. Uh... You can just roll the d20 and we can add the modifiers after if you want. Do it fancily. Uh, save myself some time in the long run. 37. Okay, 10 plus 2 plus 7. Okay. Oh, I'm rolling well. I'm getting back into it. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a good start, Thomas. <laughs> oh, no, Hold he's up. feeling himself. <laughs> The Regulus load rolled low. And then there's going to be one other group I test. Everyone else is going to stay in order. We're going to test Satirius here. Uh, mm. It's a key one to keep an eye out for. 25. Uh, so he too will get the Regulus. Uh, so here's how this plays out. Um, you will get glory for taking the field first. 
um, if you if you wish to take the field, and it's going to go from left to right to determine who's taking uh, taking the field where. I'm going to mark you guys with with like a size modifier as you go in, so it's clear like who's adding what to size, and then eventually, if we get to a point where there's unevenness, we'll we'll shift it over till it gets done. You can always opt not to go first, but there is glory in in taking the field first, and that goes to the axe if you choose to take it. Uh, first, you will have the biggest um, chance of glory here, or not chance, but the biggest bonus of glory. Or you can forego that and play your cards and and for like forfeit that to the born, who can then forfeit and so on and so on. Do you want to go first? Or do you want to put yourself on like a oh. hold action kind of thing? I'll go first. Okay. Okay. All right. So you get a uh, hundred glory for taking All right. the field first. The barony of the axe. Do Florence go... definitely has a whole procession where he's waving to everyone as he's making way in, uh, alongside some very obviously uh, not Salisbury knights. Mm. Yeah, they are. Sorry. They are Cornishmen. Yeah. So you so... see what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that brings us to the Born. Uh, the Born is going to cede uh, to the loyalists. Interesting. The loyalists. Mm. The loyalists know that the regalists have allied themselves with Barony of Axe. The loyalists are going to take to the field. Okay. In opposition uh, to the Axe? Gotta knock them out. <laughs> oh, we're doing and this right now. And quickly enough before the regalist can take the field, preferably. Sorry. <laughs> um, as uh, as they're kind of riding up, I think Virgil will kind of pull alongside. I'll keep it. I'll keep it short, Bob. But uh, yeah, yeah, Virgil kind of pull alongside Edric and go. Uh, obviously, death is not a desired outcome in this kind of competition, and I know my reputation precedes me on my willingness to engage in bloodshed. So know that I don't mean any degree of eagerness when I say, are you prepared to take things all the way should you need to? We are not animals, Sir Virgil, and I know you better than those who would call you, a, shall we say, a bloodhound. Death is a common threat. And should Florence die because of my actions, I will not forgive myself. But we are fighting with blunted... Are we fighting with blunted blades? Yes, of course. Yeah, they're, re right? they're rebated, so any any sharpened weapon is rebated. Yeah, so... Yeah. We are fighting with blunted blades. And though death can occur... Well, Florence is a pious man. He'll tell you so himself. I would God would not turn his back on us. I would never condone anything dishonorable, Edric. Just know that it might come between your friend's life and Logros's safety. Can you that make that That is politics. Any day. But that is politics in a nebulous future which we chart. This is play. I fear that it's not, Edric, but... By all means. And he'll kind of fall back. Clearly, he's unsatisfied with that answer. It's fair. Look, here's the thing. If someone dies because of a blunted blade, uh, Edric's going to be like, wow, that's unlucky. Um, it's not uh, having someone assassinated in the night uh, because they oppose your plans. You do all that, your, and yeah. he'll be awful about it. Mm. Weapons would have been um, distributed to, like, rebated weapons. Mm. No one's going in. There's a good security check, you know, going through to make sure there is, this is relatively above board. I'm not going to say no one slipped past it. I'm just saying there's a good security mm. check. Um, that brings us to the born. How many times can you seed without it looking uh, uh you can continue to see it as much as you want that's kind of the yeah i'm gonna okay yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna see specifically i want to i'm at least gonna wait until after the royalists i mean the regalists rather regalists? okay yeah uh okay 
so swans comes out. Uh, ooh, this is a good one. I didn't expect this, <laughs> actually. Um, yeah, this is who I wanted to see where they're going to go. Um, they head over to the axe. There's a long pause uh, as they ride out. Mm. Satirius Fantastic. looks back and forth, and then he moves over to the axe. Uh... And the reason I'm going to seed a second time here is because uh, right now, I think if you're trying to like roughly keep it even, Regalus would have would would be going to the loyalist side. Uh, so this is just emphasizing that they are putting themselves on the opposite side to the loyalists rather than it's like, oh, it was just the order we came out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, uh, sure enough, so the left is actually outnumbering the right by a little bit. Not, not crazy, because these units aren't mm -hmm. as big. But uh, the Regalists come out, as you're, you're seating, there's no hesitation. They immediately move over to the opposition yeah. of the Loyalists. Yeah. And that, that gives Born the opportunity to, to, to really help out the underdog here. And... And gosh, we're we're just you know, we're gonna stand right next to the the loyalists, no hesitation against. Oh, look at all these crazy. Okay, so you meanwhile protection racket. <laughs> Florence looks over and goes, "Well, this is awkward." Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're gonna be fighting uh, against the. Board. I'm gonna be fighting my. I'm also gonna be fighting yeah. my own brother who yeah. joined the board. <laughs> Your own yeah. brother. Yeah, so good. <laughs> hmm. Oh well. Yeah. Tyler the cards lay. Um. So that puts us. So left seven versus right twelve. No. Well, okay. Uh. So the rest are gonna fold in here. I'm just gonna track them as we go. This memory. Uh. Is gonna move over here as well. Uh. Mostly because... Ironically in defiance of the king's memory. <laughs> uh, technically, it's just a matter Cicero. of... Yeah. Uh, I mean, left, do, left do you remember our king? Oh, actually, no, that's a very good point. <laughs> um, left, left 11, right 12. Uh, Close. Mil Milkfield... Ooh, um, yeah, Milkfield will ride over here. Thank God. No. Oh. I don't like that. I, uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned how many, <laughs> how, how many, many people are on the you're being side. like, oh, thank God, I'm so happy, and the entire side of the other field is just completely <laughs> coped. Yeah. Uh, where side? Uh, rides here as well. Uh, <laughs> Steal yourself, Virgil. Virgil laughed at Virgil's... me like I oh, chose yeah. the wrong side. Yeah, no, Virgil's. I know what I'm grinning. doing. Virgil's no, got 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 bright <laughs> smile for this. He's yes. so excited. West Lavington, run by the aged knight Sir Huil. Um, Huil. Uh, who has the highest glory out of Florence and Edric and Edric glory? I it think it might Florence, be me. I think. Yeah, seven thousand two hundred. Yeah, seven thousand and sixty-five for me. So it's him. Yeah. All right. Um, so it's gonna be someone's gonna be forced to go over, which is interesting because they ride up, and it's very clear that they they take to uh, yeah. Florence. Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh. You know, what I should have rolled for. I should have rolled for Newton Manor. Actually, uh, let's see if they get to go ahead here. No, you know what? He's seeding even if he is. Uh, Mir goes next. Mm -hmm. The Mir Barony will take to the right. Hey! A mere pittance. Uh, Which one was Leaf in? Was Leaf in, um... Oh, Leaf, you fucker! <laughs> yeah. You bastard! Wait, you, tr you trusted a specifically intrigue knight? Who? Only to be fair, he was like, 
you should lead your own faction. And you're like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. Correct. Yeah. I well, ain't left, nobody's puppet. Yeah, well, <laughs> left comes out and they ride here. And right after them, this group moves to the other side, which is basically they're just not going to be on the same side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool, the yeah. cool hill farm. We've got the cool hill farm. <laughs> Uh, Which hill so farm do I have? I always forget. Green. Green. And that will put um, Newton Manor and Stedford, who both ride out together uh, as one, almost like one unit. They ride past you all and, and they fall into the mix. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I will take recognized rules from everyone who's over on the right side real quick. You can add a plus um, seven to the roll. While we are doing this, Bob, um, someone in chat asked if you could potentially put a size marker on each of the the banners. I don't think it's that big a deal if you don't, if you can't. But if that's yeah, easy for you. I I kind of have to. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I find it peculiar that the unpopularity of our cause is gaining us allies we wouldn't otherwise have. You have made a lot of enemies, Edric. I should hoped that the petty politics would not have played into it so intensely, and yet, here we are. Men are inconstant, and the seductive whispers of foreign powers are omnipresent. Also, they really don't like me. I should have dueled less. Indeed. In hindsight? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is gonna be really really entertaining because what ends up happening here is that it's left 24 to right 20 and uh the only one small enough on the left hand side to change that Farm. is yep is the green <laughs> one. i was hoping this would happen i was hoping that they would get forced over so yeah. they uh, they kind of like make everyone move up just so they're on exact opposite ends. So they're on the right? opposite side, so yeah. I, I think I yeah. think Edric is the first to go, no, no, this has to happen. Everyone move to the side. <laughs> yeah. I never Give thought I'd fight space. on yeah. opposite sides of the of the field of the battlefield yeah. from the red. Uh Gareth, who I imagine is kind of like glad handing his way around, just being like, you know, saying hi to everyone, is gonna remark be like I think we've rather lucked out having both hill farms on our side. Going to fight like demons, make sure that they come out looking better than the others. So What's long this? as they don't attack each other in the melee. Oh, they're far enough apart. I think we'll be fine on that front, but they'll certainly try to one-up the other flank. They can only help us, right? What's the story there? What's the story anywhere? Men with their failings and their violence. Huh. Affairs and a blood feud. There have been much for blood feuds. My blood runs a bit cold. You're oh, nice uh, you. Winterborn Gunnet, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> it's always nice when someone's heard of us. I uh, kept tabs on some of the competitors. I don't remember if your name was thrown around or not, but I certainly recognize your heraldry. I'm flattered, Sir Virgil. I uh, don't imagine that I'm the cock of the walk when it comes to a melee, but uh, I certainly shall be doing my best. You're certainly well informed. I don't think I gave my name yet. <laughs> uh, that unnerves people sometimes. I apologize. I think Virgil shoots a look at Edric and just goes like, My, you two will get along famously. Yeah. Information is power, and here yeah. is a lovely place to know each other's name before we begin. But that said, the yeah. beginning is soon. Let's Sorry. hope you fight like you talk. And he uh, just kind of gets gets ready. <laughs> okay, so uh, that recognized rule. I forgot to double back on that. Um, for those that succeeded, which uh, is Gordon oh. and Thomas, uh, you see amongst Newton Manor, you see mm, several mercenary knights. Um, amongst them, or at the lead of them, is Sir Brassius. Oh! In, without his oh. shield, without his coat of arms, uh, the former, uh, well, royal uh, 
captain of the guard. Interesting. Very interesting, considering uh, the, let's say, current house politics. I'm glad I didn't kill him um, yeah. when he came to my house seeking shelter. <laughs> yeah, dude. I've been saying. Is, He's a cool dude. Is is there any sense of uh, that I would have of uh, Brastis' regard in Salisbury, like how, how he's thought of here? Uh... There's a mixed bag, I think. A lot of the okay. player knights hate him, so I don't. I it's a, it's a skewed reality. Um, he uh, he he killed one of the Salisbury veterans uh, during the battle at Cornwall. Uh, that was uh, Edric's sire and a knight of uh, Newton Manor. Newton Manor, nonetheless. So there's a bit. It's a bit of a scandal in and of itself that he's riding yeah. for Newton Manor. Uh, yeah, I I'm going to uh, murmur. Like right up next to Virgil and be like, uh, "Have you considered telling a friend, Edric, that he should uh, shift a bit to the left and ride next to Brassius?" <laughs> oh, also, so Brassius is here. <laughs> yeah, I, Virgil starts laughing. <laughs> uh, I'll uh, I'll float the idea to him. Uh, I saw we'll... him. I see him. All will be well. <laughs> oh been handed a gift handed a gift sir something of disreputable if i may say nature for quarreling that you have might not ease fears if you can be shown to be riding next to a man that you would otherwise have quite a quarrel with you may say that indeed but the right flank is where i want to be he does well. have a point also, Brassius is not wearing his coat of arms, so... I mean, there's yeah. only yeah. so... so, uh, Mystery Knight you can be in an era of chainmail yeah. without full yeah. helms. Gee, but, I wonder who yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, but this is... but this isn't something that we need to be public so much as, like, mm. uh, if a couple a people... Whisper. Knights talk, it'll... Yeah. it'll get out eventually. Yeah. He's also, like, very famous. Like... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, he was uh, he was the knight's bodyguard. The, the, um, he, he was the uh, king's royal guard. Uh, he was yeah. very interesting. He was the royal captain of the royal guard, no less. Yeah. All right. I think we're ready to, to dive in here. Um, so, uh, but your recommendation is appreciated. Uh, but yes, we're gonna we're gonna zero in on the actual like start of things, which will be a charge, uh, the first charge. Um, we're using a strong bastardization of of what's presented in the sixth edition starter kit, uh, but but some of the general concepts are there. So lances and and other sharp weapons are abated. Uh, knights defeated when they're unhorsed, knocked unconscious, killed um, accidentally, of course, because no one would kill on purpose in this. Uh, or that, of course not. Yeah. Uh, when an opponent is defeated, their steed can be taken as a prize. So that's like one of the advantages uh, you can take. Um, we don't really have to... I mean, the only team that's going to have any sort of uh, concern around being a Conroy is going to be the, the Loyalists. Uh, the Born are going to act as their own Conroy. So I've got alternate pools for that in mind. And then multiple opponents uh, can attack an individual knight. Right? That is a possibility. Um, so with that in mind, uh, I rolled intensity and despite it being, uh, really low intensity because, um, tournaments are considered half intensity, that means that you don't have a ton of opportunity here. You're just going to be faced with what's happening. If intensity is low, you can make battle tests to see if you have a bit more opportunity to command, uh, the way the maps taking place. We will give each of the leaders of their respective areas though, uh, the NP or the PC, sorry, uh, one battle test each. If you crit, you still get that opportunity to, to you, you, you come upon an opportunity that you can claim. Um, uh, does a failure do anything? That's a fumble. Oh boy. Does a, uh, what do anything, Thomas? Uh, does a failure or a fumble do anything? Uh, should I not activate a passion here? Uh, failure does not do anything. A fumble will do something. Uh, I'm going to roll my battle straight. Okay. 
All right. So is that all of us do, or is just the leaders? Just the, just the leaders for now. Cool. Uh, for that initial piece. Thank oh. God. <laughs> All right. So this is effectively the first charge where the knights go crashing into each other in the center. Um, what what it's going to end up looking like then is you're crashing into uh, one of the units that it's facing. And we're going to zero in more so on how you all are individually doing in this melee uh, versus kind of like doing a full strategy game with this. One, we don't have time to, it's it's going to be overbearing. So we're going to go, I think we'll go to uh, the Barony of the Axe first. Um, Mark, uh, who would you least, I think you end up facing your brother at the very okay. beginning of this. I think that's what a fumble, <laughs> I'm thinking about what's a fumble, and a fumble is probably having some kind of feud yeah. with your kin as a result of this, so... I think just by placement, uh, you end up in a situation where you and Rodri end up. Uh, it's it's too late. By the time you're crashing in, you realize it's it's you versus him. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is going to be a, a charge, and you're not really going to get an opportunity to choose in in the first round because it's just a you know first charge. Yeah. And All right. Uh, First he, charge. Is Rodri's sheet up to date, or is he still backdated? He's a little bit behind. Okay, I'll just uh, I'll fiddle with it a little bit. But... No. Right. I haven't used him in ages. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, oh, we'll, hey, if you we'll get really unlucky, you'll never have to use him again. <laughs> I hope not. Oh, he's not my only brother, though. <laughs> I have spares. I've got spares. Oh. That's Pendragon, baby. We're going to say because you fumbled too, he's going to attempt to be impassioned with loyalty to the Lord here. That makes sense. I don't think All he right. can roll Love Family of 20 when uh, the situations happen. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he can. I don't think that's. that's, that's I think it, it depends on how, how flexible his mental gymnastics can be, but no. I'd say probably not. No. I don't know. I don't think passions are meant to be justified that way. I think uh, yeah. I think that prevents him from being able to do so. You haven't betrayed the family. You're just choosing to take mm. the family in a different direction. Well, it's this just... is all part of the plan. This yeah. Is, yeah. He was supposed to join the, the born identity. The born <laughs> confederation. <laughs> yeah, that. Um... <laughs> confederacy. The born conspiracy. Yeah. Uh, so loyalty lord, uh, he succeeded. Uh, uh, Florence is not impassioning himself. No? No. He can't justify it in this scenario. Interesting. Right. In this case, it's a lance versus lance, good sir. Spear versus lance, whatever you have in your I rolled a five. Ooh. I rolled like shit. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Rodri did you, gets you. Uh, did you add his plus five? Oh, I didn't. Uh, it. it yeah, it doesn't matter in any case, uh, but it, yeah. I didn't either, so. Um, okay, so. Uh, I guess that's just damage half uh, as rebated weapons. So. Uh, yeah. It's, hor it's horse damage half. <laughs> so we'll just do a uh, uh, 66, but two. Nine, nine damage. Um. I but soak it with my armor. You do, however, uh, half means it would be 18, 19, uh, which is probably higher than your knockdown on your sheet. Yep. Okay. So, uh, but not double your knockdown. So no. You, you have to test your horsemanship or All right. be sent get out. Get him, of, Rodri. This is like the equivalent of going, going over the top rope. You get eliminated here in the Royal Rumble. Yeah. If I get eliminated in the first round, it's going to be fucking funny. Get him, Rotary. <laughs> by your by, brother. By oh, Rotary, I too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I ain't going out like that. Okay. Okay. Pity. So you you reel, you get sent back, um, but you are, in fact, still on horse, and you are still ready to fight. Um, as you engage, uh, I just need to see what, uh, what your morale is going to take, and that's something I forgot to do here. So, um, let me just find you here. You fought a Knight of the Born. 
uh, morale loss for this guy would have been 10. Uh, so in this case, uh, Mark, what are what are you riding for? What is your passion for being here? This is something uh, I should have done in reverse, but I tried yeah, to. Uh, his passion in this case uh, is specifically about family. He is doing this for the sake of his family. What needs to be done to protect his family's uh, lifestyle, um, uh, future, everything. Because if he doesn't win this, there's a chance he could lose his barony forever. Okay. Uh, with that in mind, what is your love family? Fifteen. Fifteen, okay. So you take a pretty devastating uh, loss to morale. Your morale is down to five after this exchange. Oh, shit. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, but your numbers aren't dropped yet. Now we're going to go over to the other side here. Uh, we're going to move to... Um, let's let's continue with the Born because they we've seen what they've started. Uh, we'll go to you, Colin, in this case. Um, what do you, what do you yeah. think uh, the Born... Is this a is this loyalty born in this case that they're riding out for? I've been going back and forth um, because it's basically a question of how how good faith is Gareth's investment in the born, right? Yeah. He's impassioned by this idea, but is it really just a kind of smokescreen for his personal or family am uh, ambitions? Um, and I I wasn't sure about that so uh i thought i would just uh roll real quick roll one of my traits to kind of okay. yeah um i'm just gonna I, I think generous versus selfish so start with generous so yeah generous uh i think it he he is kind of forcing it <laughs> himself to make it about the born he's he, he really it's not in his nature he he wants to go head hunting he wants to uh find a way to turn this into a personal coup but i think it's loyalty to the born okay that makes sense all right uh so you're fighting alongside uh erwin who's who's acting as kind of the leader in the figurehead here um mm -hmm. you end up uh you didn't roll a what was your battle test you succeeded succeeded uh, yeah yeah uh, so you you have a couple of options. Uh, you can fight someone in West Lavington, the Axe, or Swans. Uh, your default uh, is Axe. You have to do a battle test yeah. to fight one of the other two. Yeah. Um, I actually think sticking with the Axe. Um, I think the the way to that benefits the Born is like kind of like you didn't join us, so we're going to show you why you should have joined us. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me just roll that. So your opponent. Uh, oh Jesus! What a monster! This, this guy. guy's a beast. Yeah. Yeah. This. What did this, you feed this, is... this man, Florence? <laughs> corn uh, accent. Uh, <laughs> corn. It's, oh. It is corn. Right. Corn and Irishman. Corn and Irishman. Uh, All right. Uh. So in this case, um, you are fighting a very capable opponent. Uh, yeah. I am going to invoke a passion. <laughs> yeah, understood. Oh, That's nice. a crit. Oh, that wow. is a crit. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd give you glory, but... Um... Yeah. <laughs> so that is plus 10? Yes. Yep. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Isn't that There's just the way of things? Very, that's mm. exactly yeah. the kind of rolls yeah. you can expect. Ah! We're ah! Living, that living that high life. All right. All right. Uh, horse damage is 66, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, I've got a quick question for when it gets to my turn. Um, Do Still. we have to use our lance? Uh, for first charge. Yep. Yeah, sure. So that actually matches his size. Okay. So he is going to uh, test his size, or test his horsemanship, uh, mm -hmm. which is 13. 
Oh, he stays up. Oh, so. he's fine. Um, That's my boy. You, know, you don't. You don't take him out. It's a minimal uh, morale loss, uh, and because you succeed against your opponent, uh, uh -oh. you get uh, you get something back for that in the way of morale. So you lose four. Why don't you roll a d6 for me, Colin, to see uh, <laughs> if you regain any of that morale for your unit. All right, it's right back up. So you are at your same starting morale that you were prior. So it's, uh, it's good. My uh, my horsemanship is not good, Thomas. Uh. <laughs> well, neither's mine. Look, we're meant to be on the ground, killing and wading through their blood. This time we'll just hit them over their head with wood. Uh, sounds like a knight married a Saxon. Um, so <laughs> yeah. let's uh, let's uh, let's start with you, Thomas. Uh, so your opponents uh, in where you're positioned are the Regulus or West Lavington. Um, let's break the smaller group first. Let's go with West Lavington. Okay. Uh, Can... The aged knight of West Lavington will learn what it is. Make a battle uh, oh, Sorry, roll. what were you going to say, Virgil? Oh, wait, um, um who's my, who's my standard? Uh, sorry, what were you going to say, Liam? Oh, um, I was just going to say, I noticed something here. It says knights on the same team, especially in the same uh, Conroy, are expected to assist each other, and multiple opponents can attack an individual knight. Um, can I have Virgil play bodyguard for for Edric and, and just assist him in his roles? Is that something that I can do? Uh, you can. It's okay the way, would, not. the way it would play out yeah. is you're, you're giving him this opponent an attack where he has to split to try and hit both of you or you know that's, that's i like I, yeah. yeah i like that idea I, I'm i don't want to step on your i don't want to step on your parade because you're practically huh? the jesus of murder um, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. spiritually not 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 uh mm -hmm. not prudently yes um but if you would like um so i roll battle um wasn't that if i was changing uh who would the standard person i would be fighting be uh that's correct west levington would be your standard right now Got you. Yeah. Uh, alrighty. Uh, in that case, yes, I will be going against West Lavington. Oops, someone's at the door. Be right back. Oh. Okay. Uh, we'll start with you, Virgil. Actually, you know what we'll I'm do? We'll, we're just gonna pull. Uh, Sir Irvin of West Lavington. Oh my God. Mm. Right. He's oh. good. Uh, Holy shit. shit! I'm now glad I. Some of these this. guys are meant to be pretty brutal. So uh, West Lavington is one of those. Uh, and uh, we we need to verify because there's two of you in the loyalists. What is your shared uh, what is your shared passion here that you're fighting with? I would be using love of family, if anything, because I am blessed to have the uh, the words of per officium gloria through duty glory, and I want to carry my family into, uh, shall we say, out of the ignominy that it began in. Um, but I'm down for pretty much anything, including honor, which might be your highest. Honor is my highest. Um, I might want to save that for something that's more dangerous. This isn't, this this isn't so this much is what you're, your, yeah. Yeah, this Go is ahead. just your, um, this is for your morale that you're doing. Right. Uh, um, yeah. Honor yeah. Honor is pretty good for me. And I think that, my, that, yes. that fits narratively better than love family for, for I think so, for yeah. Joy. My love family's 20, my honor's 16. We can make that work. And uh, what's what's yours, um, Virgil? Honor? Okay. Uh, yes, it's an 18. 18. Okay. Uh, so your morale will be, you get a bonus because there's two of you fighting together. You get a plus five for having, uh, both having a 16 plus in honor. So you're gonna have a 21 Hell morale yeah. to begin with. All right. Which is really good. Hell yes. Okay. Uh, so you're Sir Irvin versus both of you, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to activate a passion, if I may. Yep. As would I. Uh, I would, for the reasons mentioned before, like to activate my passion of love of family. We've got to knock them out as best we can. Um, so that, well, if I fail here, I will be the bastard who uh, usurped the loyalist faction and then lost badly. And that's not going to look good on any family history. <laughs> No, they're going to be telling stories about that one for decades to come. Okay. 
Um, I think I'll trigger Loyalty Lord, but I want to see how... Yeah, you got your Exalted, so I might actually not. I think I'll hold on to it. Okay, so uh, you don't really have the options you'll have later as far as what you're fighting or how you're fighting. Uh, mm -hmm. Thomas, in this particular case, um, this opponent, seeing Virgil and seeing an opportunity to hit you directly, knowing who you are as Sir Edric, he's going to all in on you. Well, good. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so, and then it's plus five for a charge? Uh, we can forego that bonus. because Since gonna everybody's be doing it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Critical. Hey! Hey, look at that. Yeah, that's nice. good. Uh, I clicked it, but I don't think it rolled. All right. Oh, oh I've missed horse damage. It's been a while. Uh, <laughs> and he rolled like like uh, crap. So both of you can do your damage, and then I think I think very likely Thomas is going to send him over off of, off of his horse. Hey, don't uh, don't damage. count your chickens before they he hatch. Both, yeah, he that's not like that. Yeah. He doesn't wow. get shield against me though. He doesn't yeah. get shield. It's it's true. I actually I don't think he gets shield against either of us and you critted so do you roll the extra crit damage has oh you did yeah uh, okay. i did yes yeah, uh, it, it was bad as well um he doesn't get a shield against you he does get a shield against yeah because he succeeded yeah. on wrong. and it's it's half damage in both cases so Yarp. i'm just gonna do that right, yeah so 13 and 7 uh 13 is 13 even hit is knocked down uh, uh it does not because his size is 18. yeah okay. so some damage will go through but he actually manages he to stand tall in that. Okay, so uh, morale for for you guys in the Loyalists. Your morale drops from uh, the 21 to uh, 15. 21 to 15. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Considering we got the better of that exchange, mm -hmm. do we uh, do much the same and get uh, morale back? Or is that a separate thing? Yes, yeah, you, sorry, roll 1d6, because uh, just one for the unit. You can let, uh, let's let Liam roll this. Yeah. And sure. It's because random, and then you'll be rolling a lot of leaders. Yeah. Five? Five. Okay, Very so nice. back to 20. Um, there's always the option, too, if you get really low, which we're probably going to see from Florence here in a second, is you can return, uh, you, you retreat to the rear, you replenish, and then you can come back. That's kind of one of the ideas you can do. It makes you skip a turn, but it's it's a viable thing in a big battle. Now, nah, fuck that. <laughs> Push. And then Press we're going to... We're just going to see... We fought in enough wars to know that's what we do. <laughs> we're going to just see, in general, how this is going. Okay. Uh, it looks like the left side is actually coming out uh, a little bit better than, than the right. And this might be... Maybe the king's memory and wear side kind of crushing down on this side. Um, the hill farms aren't aren't uh, doing as well as they ought to. Um, come on, yeah. hill farms, yeah. come on! This is a historic moment, and you're wasting time. <laughs> Not, none of this is like uh, significant. It, it seems to be largely a stall in the middle, right? This is right now. It's uh, on target to wage on multiple days if. if things don't change, right? That's what it feels like. It's exhausting as hours pass, and uh, we will... Uh, I'm going to do a quick check-in with, with Colin here, because we're nearing uh, our late night. What time are you... Uh, how much longer do you have before we... Are we uh, I think I can I can go for a little bit more. Um, okay. Okay. It's 12.30 where I am, so... Just give uh, me about five minutes if you need to tap out. We'll make sure we, we bring it to the next. Just all right. As we anything uh, anyone wants to know before we move into the second round of battle? Nope. Um, no. Nope. Yeah, I don't believe so. Everything everything looks like it's a bit of a stalemate. Um, and now that we're in the second round, uh, we can use our swords, right? <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, so that brings us to the barony of the axe. Uh, yeah, we're gonna pull back and recover some morale. Okay. Uh, you're gonna roll roll the back, uh, retreat to the rear. Yep. Okay. Uh, Swan will move in then. Yeah. Good. 
I was going to go for them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mark, give me a battle test. There are many um, things we disagree with, but among those we agree with, these goddamn people got to get out of our borders. <laughs> uh, yep, I'll just roll for it. Let's see if I roll like shit. I'm rooting for you. I'm not, but I am too. You know nope. what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have a fifth. This is unlucky. Okay. Uh, Mark, I'm going to get you to just give me a D6 roll, please. Three. You, you're getting three morale. What is your morale right now? Total. Uh, it'd be five plus three. So you're still and, uh, or eight. You're still in a bad uh, spot. Yeah, you're likely you're likely no. gonna have to spend a little bit of time back here. Uh, the alternative is you can uh, ride yourself into the support of another unit and essentially, mm -hmm. essentially merge with a unit uh, for going your own banner. <laughs> yeah. Now, now that you've retreated, that's an option, right? Yeah. He's gonna okay. save that for when things look a bit more dire. <laughs> Either way, his turn is over. Okay. All right, so that brings us back to the right-hand side. We're going to go back to Colin at the, at, with the Born as a uh, right. swan moves in under his Tetirius and his son. And right. our wrestle guy. Uh, <laughs> and our wrestle guy, yeah. Uh, am I rolling battle? Or is yes. that uh, please give just me a battle roll. Okay. Because uh, if you crit, you get an opportunity. Now. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have any detriment here, uh, mm -hmm. unless it's a fumble. It just means uh, no opportunities arise. Uh, yeah. So in that case, uh, you have a Swan Knight that you're fighting. Let me just pull up them. And I'm guessing the passions only last the one round because this is a, a big battle. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. These All right, guys, Jeez. I'm getting max rolls holy on shit, Randall. Daffod. So Daffod. All right, I'm uh, I think I'm gonna invoke honor on this one. Um, uh, now that we're in it, like I had, I've got to equip myself well. Uh, when 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 I was like deciding where to commit the born, that is a decision that is informed by my love of uh, of the born. But now there's an enemy in front of me, and it gets a lot more personal. That's fair. All right, so that's a plus five. Oh, yeah, that's nice. oh, baby! And he is fighting with his spear, so there's a chance, but not a good one. And if he crits. Nope. He not. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right. Damage. Uh, it's going to be. Oh. oh, oh. Yeah. 40. Yes. He's yeah. gone. Yeah. Uh, that is going to automatically send him off his horse as he takes 20 damage because uh, that is higher than double his size. So he gets yes. crushed down to the ground. Was that with a uh, sword? It was. Yeah. So. Yeah. You see him, like, just uh, on top of that. Let's see how bad. Hey, he's not feeling good as he takes 22 damage after uh, everything. And uh, <laughs> hits the ground. Honestly, uh -huh. that, would, that would kill some knights. It would have kill killed Perrin, I think. It would have <laughs> killed me. Actually, yeah. That's why we have right rebated, rebated weapons, or that guy would just be straight up dead, right? So. Yeah. Right on. Good job, dude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, because you completely out it, like you ousted someone, um, you get 2d6 uh, morale back. You lost 9. So, you can only go back to your maximum, but okay, you okay. lost 9. So, the, the way morale is meant to play out is eventually you're going to get tired. Your unit's going to get tired, yeah. and they need to re retreat to the rear at some point. That's kind of the idea. Um and that brings us then to uh, Phyllis. Once we're finished with West Lavington, let's deal with Milkfield and Deer if possible. 
enemies on the right flank. For now, press the attack. Uh, and yes, oh, I, yeah. I would like to smack him with my rhythm stick. Okay. Uh, go ahead and... Uh, sorry. Who did you say you're targeting right now? Uh, West Lavington for now. West Lavington, okay. Uh, and I am I also roll back? backing you up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the same same uh, idea here, guys. Yep, same idea for for Virgil. Unless uh, unless Edric commands him to do otherwise. Honestly, I've been outnumbered in so many fights. This is really good. It's so good being on the opposing <laughs> side of this. All right. Uh, battle success. It's a wonder why more people still. don't do it. So no no opportunity you just end up against a this West Lavington Knight, Sir Dalado Dalta. Um Absolutely. Well that still still competent though. Um Yeah. Okay. Now um, you guys uh will take your, your attack rolls. Uh, yep. I fa uh, I failed my passion, so nothing there. Uh, I'm going to impassion myself with loyalty lord, not my highest. <laughs> Success, though. Hey, not bad. Um, now my sword is my highest, uh, and I rolled uh, with a natural four, a fifteen. Okay. Oh, I forgot that we could use our swords this round. <laughs> oh well. Uh, and Virgil, one uh, d twenty. Virgil got a ten. Yeah, I'm just doing the math here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so hey. he fails to land a hit on Edric, and he uh, hits lower, he, partial success against Virgil. So you're both going to get your uh, your damage. Uh, 18 damage, uh, not protected by a shield. Ah, my damage rolls always! <laughs> <laughs> that's that's three ones. That's, yeah. Ah oh, man. Weird, man. Uh, Col Colin, just so you know, that's what every single one of my damage rolls has looked like <laughs> since I started playing this game. Fantastic. Fantastic. Nine and seven. Uh, but the size eighteen. He's only size fifteen, so he does have to check his horsemanship. I honestly could just be rolling my regular oh. damage too. <laughs> it's the same roll. He failed his horsemanship. His horsemanship <gasps> was 14. Oh, baby. Hell so, yeah, brother. So Damn, enough is good enough. Uh, all right. So that's a that's a, a blow to their uh, morale. And um, for Sir Del Deldove is uh, gone. Um I imagine it as uh, we we all clash like the three of us together, and then uh, just as uh, as Virgil is stabbing and stabbing, protected by the shield, Edra like. <laughs> okay. It's honorable. I think Virgil's laughing maniacally at this. It's not it's not the same, but clearly he's having fun. Like this is very fun for him. That's fair. Honestly, honestly, that, to be honest. yeah. Honestly, Edric's a little bit disturbed, but he's having an okay time. <laughs> he never gets to fight knights. This is the coolest. This is the coolest. Right. Fighting knights is a sad occasion, except here, where they crossed him. Where he's winning. <laughs> All right. As we as we move um, into the third round, uh, did you have a specific point you wanted to make? Yes, uh, morale. Right. Uh, so you lost. You would have lost five two d six would be your morale. You can only maximum uh, back we, to your your starting yeah, point. Yeah, back to twenty one. Uh, we get back to twenty. Okay. okay. Uh, that brings us to round three. I'm gonna test the intensity again. Maybe I'll finally fail a roll versus six at some point. There we go. Um, okay. <laughs> so this means you have some more flexibility in where you're choosing a target as long as you pass your battle roll. We're going to zoom in on the axe whose morale is still pretty low. Uh, do you want to sit another round out and gain another d6? Let's start with a battle test anyways. No. Regardless of your choice, you're going to have to roll battle. 
Success, finally. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, so you can stay for 2d6 worth of morale, or you can go back in and you know with a battle roll, one of your, probably your only chances would be against the hill farm uh, right now. Uh, the two hill farm sides, like one of them is opponents. Right. Uh, yeah, he'll go up against one of the hill farms. Uh, just checking. Oh, looks like the the left. Side, despite your efforts, the left side around you seems to be still superior. Um, so it's not like you're not making a difference because you are, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know it's a big battle, and uh, it yeah. seems that uh, King's mm -hmm. memory is doing a good job. Wireside's is doing a good job. The Milkfield's doing a good job. Uh, the Regalists are doing a good job, and uh, Born and the Loyalists are are holding things together for their side. of uh, left or right, Mark? Where you want to go? Uh, where will it lead me? Um, left. Red? Whichever side the Newtons aren't on. Uh, Alright, so you come in in support of Milkfield. Uh, let's see who your opponent is. Jesus. That's never a good sign when everything goes oh. off like that. Yeah. Uh, by the way, just just a note, like I know these numbers are always high, but it's like 11 plus 2d4 plus 2. So you could have a 14 as an opponent. Here. Mm. Like, yeah, exactly. These, these are just going off. These dice are going off. So. Um, okay. Uh, you are fighting Sir Daffy. All right. I'm gonna charge this motherfucker. Okay, you're actually charging in. Okay. Fuck him up. He's gonna roll sword. In I want you to lose, but I want you to fuck him up. You know what I mean? I get it. Uh, do I get a bonus? Because I'm charging and he's not. Uh, yeah, you'll get a charge bonus in this case. Alright, so plus five, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, alright. Go! Nice. Crit! Alright, and he does not crit. So you will get a uh, hell get yeah full horse damage on him plus crit. Uh, horse damage fifteen plus fourteen total twenty nine halved to running up or running down. Down, I believe. Then it's a fourteen. It, yeah, he's fine. Oh, it doesn't even it doesn't surpass it. Oh no, so. When you're testing horsemanship, it's before armor, right? And everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, is it before the damage is halved? I'm, I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say yes. Okay. I think it's fair, right? Like, I think it. Yeah. Like you're not taking the damage, yeah. but it would be really boring fighting. If, if... Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it would just it, never. That makes sense from the perspective of like why you would blunt these weapons. It's to stop mm. them from killing, not to stop them from being effective. Exactly. Great. Yeah. Good point. So, Still hitting them with a, a large shaft of wood. <laughs> it's probably gonna be bad. Hello. Ah, success. Uh, well, hold on. Let me think about that because it was the the total damage might have been what is uh twenty nine total. Twenty nine is uh, no. Is that a size fifteen? Uh, 15 yeah. 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 So it, times two it's not double. Yeah. So, he, so he definitely succeeds. He succeeds. Uh, you lose six morale, uh, but you you um, did defeat him. So one d six in this case. All right. And I'll, actually, we'll add three to that because of the crit. Hey, plus three. Eight. Very nice. Okay, so you came out net positive there by two, uh, which brings you to eleven morale if I'm counting correctly. Yep. Oh, what? No, I think he was at eight, wasn't he? Nine. Nine. No, I was at eight. You had he eight? was right. Yeah. Okay. So it's at ten. Ten. Okay. Uh, you're at least in a place where you can potentially fight people. <laughs> That's good. Exactly. Uh, we're going to move then next over to the Born. Uh, uh, let's start with a battle roll. Yeah. Battle roll. Six 
success. Oh, yeah. Okay, so intensity is still some... Or no, it failed this time. Uh, so there aren't uh, any clear opportunities for you. Actually, mm -hmm. actually, hold on. When intensity fails, there is an opportunity uh, in this case. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that you get an opportunity against um, Ceterius' son, if you'd like to. Oh, absolutely. Ooh. Absolutely. Okay. All right, let me just grab his stuff here. And we'll do... My only weakness is that I've got a bum knee and can get <laughs> hit in the head with a sword. Those are two weaknesses, yes. Mm hmm. So, Salados is his name. Okay. All right, so this is a younger knight. Um, but uh, he has he has a high passion here, yes. as yeah. he impassions himself with love, family. Yeah. Oh, I but he fumbles. Am... Oh, fumbled. Uh, that's that's madness. That's madness. Yeah, that's totally madness. madness. I think we're gonna play like out this particular action. Try see if it even you. matters. <laughs> yeah. Because it might be more interesting if he gets knocked out than. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to. I was. I was also going to invoke love of family. Um, yeah, I think. I think it's like uh, zeroing in on like that. It's like that's a, that. This is going to look good on my wall. I'm going to put him up next to the singing bass <laughs> uh, and have a, a story for the kids. Yeah, I like this guy. <laughs> so. Uh, Success. That's five for the sword. That's nice. a crit. Oh, nice! And I would I, love to roll this in my normal game. That would be wonderful <laughs> if I could have these numbers. Be fantastic. Thirty-eight. Nice. Um, even roll that high, anyways. Uh, thirty-eight damage. He's just gonna get in horse. I don't think there's. It's double for sure. Um. Uh, Sir Salados is down, uh, and uh, as as he drops so early on in the melee, I think you just you know you see him climb back to his feet, and his squire like moves to help him, and he like pushes his squire down, uh, and yells at him, and they like, uh, uh, I think in that case you just see him sort of like just storming off the the field, and we'll find out what happens yeah. to Sir Salados later. Yeah, I'll Bravo. Point, point and be like, Thornbrush is that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, why don't you give me uh, 2d6 plus 3. Uh, and your morale may rise by 1, like, permanently, because you knocked out a, a key target. Uh, 11. So you gain 11 back to a maximum of whatever you started with, but your maximum jumps up by one as well. So I'm at 21 maximum, I think. Yeah. Indeed. Awesome. We'd love to see it. All right. That brings us to the Loyalists. I have warring concerns. The first is that a relatively small yet hard target has appeared on our right flank. The second is that I don't want, on the off chance that I do manage to win, to knock out Florence. Um, <laughs> uh, or rather, to knock out Mark, I should say. You know um, you want to. <laughs> no, I do. Take the to. shot, man. Take the shot. Are you kidding right, me? Yeah. Let's go. Um, Thomas is regretful, but uh, Edric will do his best to try and take the shot. Now that the intensity has failed, um, he's given West Lavington a bloody nose, and now he needs to secure his flanks. All right. Um, so is that a battle roll? Uh, let's start with a battle roll. Absolutely. Did you hear me okay? Okay, just making sure. <laughs> Yep, I heard you. Crap, I was just waiting for it to roll. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's happened, but um, no, it was just a while for it to load. Uh, okay. Success. 
All right, so with that battle roll, uh, you can move, uh, obviously not anywhere you want on the field, but given that that's only a couple of units away, you could move to your flank if you want. You'd be sending the Loyalist banner a as a whole to the flank. The flank needs to be protected, so uh, we're not surrounded and engulfed. Okay. Off to the uh, side and again. once the act, yeah, once the axe is dealt with, we can take the center again. All right. Uh, so you're going against the axe. You're not going to be able to, without a crit. You're not like going to zero in on Florence yet. Like it's just not a thing. Thank God. Yeah. Mm. All right, Sir Dane um, is your opponent. Ooh. Dane's a tough one. Mighty Dane. Virgil, second verse, same as the first. All right, both of you against one unit again? Is that the plan? Yes, sir. Uh, All right. Unless I you will... tell me otherwise. Uh, if, you want to, if you want to spread your forces, you certainly may. I think I can take this one. Uh, is... Are you sure? There's safety in numbers. Let so, us deal with this one. So be it. And uh, Virgil will actually attack a different target then. Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, all right, all right, I am going to activate a passion. Uh, what have I rolled so far? Loyalty, Lord, and love of family. Uh, so yep. I've got, I've got hate Saxon, but that doesn't apply. Um, I hate my <laughs> lord so much. Uh, I'm going to roll. <gasps> actually, uh oh. I'm gonna say. Oh. Uh oh. oh. <laughs> I look away from you for one minute. <laughs> one minute. I'll take care of this. Immediately trips over a fucking rock. <laughs> Just. Um, um. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna save my passions, particularly because that just happened. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, that's um, really funny. Is Virgil I'm this terribly as well? Hey, uh, Mar uh, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> For an honor fumble, would you say it would be appropriate that Virgil might actually try to kill one of the knights here? Uh, not necessarily. I think we need to see where this plays out. So the way an honor failure works is th in this is uh -huh. um or or a madness rather you're right. very like and this makes a lot of sense for virgil after this exchange if you're still able to participate you uh, are rogue off, you're rogue you're you're <laughs> fighting on your own accord you're your own unit it's called yes. fighting as yourself basically yeah uh, which comes with some Locked some negatives obviously yeah but um is is something uh Maybe it's a matter of, we'll, we'll see where this plays out, because it could be loof, it could be, well, we'll see how it plays out. We'll add some narrative to it. Let's Am I, uh, you, uh, I, adding... I will say this. Uh, yes, you lose one point of honor, uh, and oh. you gain 100 glory, which I will add to you now. Yeah. I also Does that affect think you have a minus well? five. Yeah, that's Or is that thing. afterwards? I think it's when you roll. I think it's a minus ten, actually. I don't think it's, it's a minus ten. Exalt, I'm sure it's a minus yeah. ten. Um, madness is specifically uh, like out of play, so there's not exactly a a, a, a negative there. Oh, I thought there was. I might be um, wrong. Let me let me check because I could be wrong. Um, I think it's a minus five. I remember sure it being minus, minus five. No. Uh, it just says the character goes mad and is out of play. Um, character must turn uh, the play must turn the character sheet over to the game master. Um, melancholy is the minus five. Uh, two right, minus but I'm in melancholy because that's not an exalted passion. No, you fumbled. You, oh, uh, you fumbled that's quite a famous a fumble. passion, so you are in madness. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bob. Then I guess you're. Is, yeah. I guess you're deciding what I'm doing. <laughs> you're in madness. Very well, fun. In, but but that isn't immediate. Like this. Yeah. This round it, will yeah. play out as with, with a minus five. Okay. I think. Oh, it is a minus um, five. Okay. Yeah. I have to I have to double check because we're we're trying to <laughs> bastardize the, the sixth edition. Oh rules. god. Oh my god, yeah. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh, it's not me for once. What's this happening? Is... <laughs> Collins cursed you. Um Yeah, he's nerd Collins luck. <laughs> Ultimate warrior Virgil of Dun Durnford. <laughs> he's done it again. <laughs> 
virtual. Oh God! Did you know, Colin, that uh, that Perrin originally was the penultimate sword fighter of the Sword of Victory, the the little trio here, and then he uh -huh. fucked up a couple of rolls so bad he lost his sword arm, and then Edric had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I I was the uh, I was I was a fop. I was uh, uh I was an intrigue knight. All right, so we're going to uh give Virgil a horsemanship roll. Minus five here. Oh, guys, Virgil's out. Oh, uh, I've, no. I've got a question that I should oh. have asked beforehand. Did you use your once a year? I did. I'd used it last episode. Okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I had that in mind, too. But... This is what happens. I think um, uh, you feel the weight of someone blindside you. From the other side as you turn to hit your opponent. Your opponent did hit you, but it, I doubt it's going to be remarkable here. Um, 24 divided by 2. Um, but you also feel the weight of a blunt weapon hit you. And as you land in the mud, you look up and you see Loof uh, on the other side. Um I think there's like a smear of blood where where like it's trickling out of his mouth where it's his lips been busted. And Virgil just smiles like a bloody smile at him. He goes, "I'll be watching you, Loof." <laughs> okay, and then and then we'll confirm where your madness goes from here as as we lose Virgil. Virgil's our first casualty of this war. <laughs> oh man, it was always destined I'm, to be. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You remember he wanted you uh, to to join him, so that might have yeah. been a little. That was a little petty, a little personal, petty yeah. And and the positioning yeah. it made sense. He went over to the flank. Um, okay, so uh, with that drop, we go to the next round. I think. Uh, no, we got to confirm what happens yeah, with Tom. Edrix. Yeah. Uh, Edric rolled fairly low, so I'm going to see what the enemy rolls. Uh, one d twenty versus nineteen. No. Ah, he rolled him worse. He rolled him worse. Ah! The odds were low. Alright, let's see it, Thomas. But Give me some damage. Let's see if he has to... Uh, At the same... I don't want I you to roll like you damage, shit. In fact. At the same time... I don't want you to win. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, I know, I know. It's that struggle. D20 versus 14. All right, he stays Fail. on horse, um, oh. and you don't do Oof. enough damage to get all the way through. So, uh, that's but all you right. Can take a D six for morale. Oh, hold on, you're gonna get a D six, but you're gonna lose uh, a bit more. Uh, I'm gonna lose. For yes, because morale. Losing. Yeah, <laughs> morale loss was three, uh, and the morale loss was seven. So we lose ten, get a D six back, and another six for Virgil. Being. For oh him boy. being knocked out. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, buddy. I got PCs, your uh, hey, PCs matter, uh, I got, right? Like yeah. player knights matter. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got six as well, so we are currently sitting at ten. Ten. Okay. Then it's just an even fight. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, we're that brings us to the next round. Uh, let's see how intensity is going. Uh. Intensity fails versus six. Uh, so that brings us, guys, to uh, a situation where... Um, well, we're going to go back uh, and look at the axe. Uh, you can give me... Because we've got the axe and the loyalist tied together, let's do battle rolls for both Edric and Florence. I think, in this game. All right. I'm due a fail here. Crit! Oh. Uh oh. Um, uh. what, uh, as I add his 15 glory, what will that do to me, uh, as I debate whether or not to turn my, uh, failure into a success? That's true, you do have your free upgrade for the year. Uh, if it's contested, I'm not gonna allow a, a, con a contested okay. role. Player fair versus enough. player. That's yeah. fair. I think it's only fair. Um, 
Could I burn mine to burn his? No. <laughs> no, I've already used mine. Uh, <laughs> um, um, so, left versus right, uh, things seem to be kind of evening out now. It seems like the right is is um, starting to uh, at least hold hold the bleeding, stop the bleeding uh, a bit. Um, we're going to then move, I think, to Mark, who you are now given an opportunity. You can do one of two things. I think I know what I'm going to do, but You go can ahead. either go after Edric, one-on-one in a duel, or you can go after the banner held by Sir Bar. Oh! Banner, banner. I'm going to do a roll. This, this only happens on a critical, by the way. Yeah. So. Uh... uh... Okay, I need to either do prudent, reckless. Yeah, prudent or reckless. Yeah, if you go after the banner, you will be fighting recklessly, which has a uh, gives your opponent a plus five to hit you. Um, I but think okay, two d six extra damage. Okay, and then I need to I need to figure out then which one is the prudent one and which one is the reckless one. I'm guessing the banner itself is like a dangerous thing. I'd be throwing it all the way to do it. Mm. Yeah, that's a it's a good point. The, arguably, mm. both both given how good of a fighter Edric is, they're both mm. they're both could be perceived as reckless. You're you're literally okay. going you're you're putting it all on the table right here because your yeah. your unit will be potentially out if you're down. Like, exactly, be much left right. You are your unit really. Yeah, he, he doesn't have a second in command really that can take yeah. over. I mean, some um, will, but they won't be. They won't yeah. be fighting with the same. They won't ferocity. be as effective. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay, I am going to do a prudent versus reckless. Uh, prudent will be uh, attempting to take out Edric, uh, and reckless will be going straight for the banner. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy! Seems like it's coming to a head. Yep, it's coming to uh, a head. Please okay. uh, remember to remember to tick prudent uh, if you haven't already. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, we get our PvP action that you guys totally set yourselves up for. I didn't do this. Just yeah. remind you all that no. before the outcomes. Yeah. <laughs> See if we can get all the player characters knocked out of the fight before we uh, before by the end of the round here. I'm feeling. I'm feeling unlucky. We'll see how it goes. I think it's it's a kind of set the scene. It's across the battlefield as Edric is looking around before he just hears calling out from across uh, a spear pointed at his friend and going, Sir Edric! Surprise! Care for a duel? Lovely day for it. <laughs> I'm sorry to do this, my friend. But, uh... Well, this suits me a little better than the uh, the uh, alternative. Hope there's no hard feelings. Depends on how hard you hit me. <laughs> I suppose I'll say the same to you. Come on then, with mirth, and in front will charge. Okay. I will say this is what I was secretly hoping for all so along. So we'll start with it's asking so you guys. We'll, we'll start with uh, asking you guys the question of whether or not you're impassioning yourselves with what passions you have remaining to do so. Florence is. There is I a reason going. I have not spent my passions. Uh, I am going to impassion myself. I am going to impassion myself with my last remaining one that makes sense, uh, aside from possibly Love Oslef, uh my honor. You know what? I'm going to impassion my honor as well. That makes sense. All right, let's love to see it, guys. Let's see where this goes. This is a matter of honor. Don't fail, don't fail, don't fail. I failed. <laughs> I succeeded. Okay. All right. All right. Um, because uh, yours is 15, nothing bad happens. Nothing bad happens, indeed. It, very funny if both both oh. sides got melancholic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, we're just like... We were so close, and then Merlin <laughs> got in the way of things. <laughs> um, absolutely. Let's get to it. I'm I guessing I can't late. charge him. I mean, technically here you could. Yep. All right, I'm going to charge. 
you guys are uh, not engaged. This is an opportunity. So it's not like you're already facing each other. You're finding yep. a hole. Okay. So. Come on, big money, big money. Daddy and wants Thomas, a new pair of Thomas, greaves. you can charge too, but it means using your spear. Uh, I will not do that because I like my sword. Oh, that's what I like to see. Oh, no, Na I rolled like shit. on a natural nine. <laughs> okay. Give me your damage and crit damage, and we'll see if Mark automatically drops. Which is quite possible. Uh, damage is 16, quite low. Uh, 30. Yeah, I'm gone. Is that double your, <gasps> your size? My size is 13. Let's double 13. my size. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The axe knight, so 30, but you had your shield, so you only take the falling damage here, Mark. Six damage. <laughs> yeah. It stings, for sure. Uh, it will severely impact the axe, and I think for... for Thomas, you haven't quite taken the axe banner, but you have uh, severely... You've dwindled them down to the last unit. So. Um, you fought well, my friend. Who's fucking next?! <laughs> <laughs> You've never looked so pretty to me before. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we go to the Born next because right? we did things in reverse that time. Colin, uh, what would you like to do now? Yeah, well, I'm going to roll battle, because I have to do that anyway. Yeah, good uh, point. Success. Um, I think, I mean, it's the somewhat boring option, but, like, grinding away at the swans seems like the way to go, because can't, nothing to my left is doing well. <laughs> it's true. So we can't, <laughs> I, if I shift my attention to the right, either to help out the loyalists or like seek out some opportunity elsewhere left flank just good goodbye no so yeah, i think i think grinding away at the swans is is the best best choice understood all right uh let's uh so battle success uh doesn't give you a, a net opportunity at least nothing's super significant here uh, so let's mm -hmm. let's see who your opponent is. Uh, Swan Knight. Uh, finally, someone without a ability at nineteen or above. Uh, for a yeah. Uh, Don't mind that. Okay, Sir right. Richard. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go sword. Oh, it's Ooh. a tie. Uh, but he's got a spear. Butt. Yep. And he's got a sword. He's, so his his breaks. Yep. All right. Interesting. That is interesting. Mm hmm. You lost four morale. You get back your your d six. Yeah. For success. Yeah. Okay. Do so net two positive. Let's see. And we will see. I think that round definitely went. I'm gonna give uh, the right a D a plus five there because we had a lot of uh, we lost Virgil, but we also had uh, we lost an, an entire unit there. Oh, oh yeah. Um, speaking of, should I roll uh, morale coming back? Oh, buddy, is that good? That's good for you guys. Yeah. Uh, they, they just rolled um, a twenty-five. Um, 25 versus a 1. Um, should I restore uh, morale? Uh, since I technically kind of did my thing. Uh, yes. Um, you will get 2d6. In that case. 2d6. 5. All right. Five. So we're at 15 now. 15. Something significant. Unless the crit did something. Uh... 
15, uh, you'll add plus uh, 3 to that as well. 18. 18. There we go. Uh, so, um, I think the, the key point here is something significant has to change for the worse for the left side. Because they roll the 1 and the other side roll the critical 25. Uh, so, I think this is going to be... Um, Hmm. If I may. Yeah, yeah. Please do. Uh, if we think of how the the south southern flank has been going well for the right, northern flank has just turned against the 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 regalists, and the born and studfold have been holding the center. I think we could reasonably say that like split between the two sides if they get, they start to fold around each other. You muted. Alright, so you're thinking you're the... Okay, I'm following you, you begin here. Begin to so, envelop. So you no. begin to split and envelop. Okay. Starting from, like, at the top kind of thing. They're mm -hmm. going to close exactly. in. Exactly. Okay. Um, I think in that case, we're going to rule the barony of the axe as eliminated as well in this process. No, that right. fits. Um, as a loyal loyalist, kind of end up here, and we start to see this envelopment with the born holding the center and mirror starting to close in. The things are going uh, really well for the the uh, right hand side folks here. Um, let's um, let's check intensity because this could be like pretty much a determining round. Um, Fumble on intensity. This is just turned Ooh. to a free for all, is what this means. You have, I think, mm. I think this means you have your choice <laughs> pick. Uh, your battle rolls will be yeah. plus ten. So why don't we start with battle rolls plus ten? Yeah. Love that. Wasn't trying to be prophetic at the at the feast, but uh... Good old two, natural two. Was that was that with it the plus ten? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a natural classic seven, Colin roll. Yes. <laughs> and uh, for you, Thomas, as well, plus ten. Absolutely. Oh, uh, natural three. Uh, oh. So success. Killing those. Uh, same. Even with a fumble, though, or even with a, a not success, it is a fumble battle roll, or a fumble intensity roll. So you're not going to be able to, like, take a banner or fight one of the, the main guys, but uh, we are going to say that there is an opportunity to actually, like, deal direct harm to the unit that you're fighting. So it's not just you, but it's your whole unit beginning to collapse in. Uh, Loyalist, who is your target with that in mind? Leo, bar, continue the encirclement. Let's get rid of Milkfield and take them from the uh, field. Okay, of... so you're gonna... Okay. Get them. Milkfield is... And uh, born still against the swan? Yeah. Okay. I will... We'll, we'll speed this up. I'm gonna uh, bring both of you an opponent. So here's the Milkfield one. And here's the swan. We are pursuing feet in detail. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> You got you got the good one. Uh, would you would you like to swap? <laughs> no, that's undoable. Um, yeah, no, I'm good. All right. So uh, with Milkfield, uh, your opponent. Let's go ahead and uh, figure that out, Thomas. Do you have anything left to impassion? Um, only love of Oslav. Um, or love sort of victory, but that doesn't make sense here. Um, my homage Uther is nine, uh, but I'm not going to be using that. Um, I think, I think I'm going to leave things unimpassioned. That that one uh, love I'm going to leave in the back pocket. Also, hospitality doesn't really work here. Otherwise, I would have milked it for all it was worth. Huh? Uh, give me a roll, good sir. Uh, rolling, rolling, rolling. 17. Oh, and he fails, too. 
Oh, baby. I think you're going to down an opponent here. That entirely depends. And kill? Uh, uh, why? Not sure yeah. when you when you uh, stepped away, Liam, if you heard uh, but Florence got eliminated. I did not hear that. Interesting. Mm. As did the axe. Oh, they were relatively small, so well, that's, you know. I think Hill Farm is something too, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> Four, yeah, 14 is pretty low, but uh, higher than the size. Interesting. Uh, did you, oh, right, because you didn't do crit. I'm sorry, I was waiting for the crit. I'm just used to you rolling crit every time. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, seven, uh, lower than, you said, oh, higher than the size. Look at that. Yeah, like he's tiny. Guy. Uh, but he stays a horse. Uh, so you'll get your D6, but you also lose uh, morale 4. Get 6 back. Uh, we are currently at 17 now. Okay. Um, I think uh, Edric is uh, famously energetic. So this is very much, uh, we're just getting warmed up two hours into the actual melee. <laughs> That's fair. All right, so uh, the Bourne versus the Swan opponent, which is Sir F Fernfell. Fernfell, yeah. Love these things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to lean into the fact that they are, they're like barely Salisbury. And um, Earth is going to invo invoke the name of the late Earl. Uh, oh, nice. This is for Roderick. And so I'm going to do Loyalty Lord. They're more Silchester anyway. They are Silchester. <laughs> and that's a cool. Nice. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, all right. So that brings us to. I'm just checking something here. I think I got it right. Did I get it right? Yeah. It doesn't matter, anyways, because they didn't crit. So it was the only. <laughs> So, uh, let's see what the damage looks like. Yeah. There goes my... Oh my god. Hero. Only 30. <laughs> Only 30 just, on a crit. Yeah, just shy of uh, twice his size. He's got size 16. Damn. Damn. But definitely higher than size 16, and his horsemanship is bad. So we'll see how it goes. All right. And then, uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, wait, isn't that higher than double? No, uh, 30, uh, 32 would be double 16. Mm. A success on horsemanship, though. So they do stand. However, it's still 15 damage. Um, so Gareth, you're gonna, you're gonna get, uh, your, um, D6. Yeah. Very nice. I'm guessing, unless something really stales he stalemates here, we're gonna see uh, things start to go really poorly for the, the left hand side. Let's see what this next round brings with the with the twenty five. Uh, you said uh, give you five, five minutes. minutes heads up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Not uh, a hard five, but no, no, it's all good. Appreciate it. So we are at that point. I think we're gonna do this one last trade here. Um, and uh, it is nearing like evening, almost dusk at this point. You've been fighting so long in the day. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, test intensity next. Uh, fail, oh. Another fail in intensity. Mm -hmm. uh, battle rolls, folks. And, uh... Ooh, fail. Edric, where'd you go? Success. All right. Uh, Edric, uh, what would you like to do, given this... 
Um, given this, the Regalists uh, haven't taken to the field too much, have they? Milkfield no. is still, like, active. They're kind of more um, in support, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, if this is going to be the final sortie, I think going against the Regalists might be the best idea. All right, let's see it. Um, so long as... Uh, so long as Hill Farm can hold Milkfields and punish uh, back attacks. Uh, I would like to do my best to invoke a passion, if I may. Okay, uh, this one, my last, uh, Love of Oslaf. These people are the kind of people who've spat on my name in secret uh, for so long, largely because of me, in fairness, marrying a Saxon. Um, okay. This would be just one more uh, grave I will dig um, to hide that shit today. Okay. Uh, so you move in, uh, with mm -hmm. the units? Yep. Um, I would like to use my once-a-year, um, upgrade to upgrade that to a critical. Okay, I'll allow it. You do find one, uh, complication here. And that complication mm -hmm. is simply that... You see uh, that you are facing two versus one here. Ah. And your opponent, aside from Sir Pinar, who we just mentioned here, is Sir Luf of Milkfield, who's turned to ride at your flank as you're moving. Indeed. Fuck him up. So you may opt to split or you can choose to and i'm only doing this because you're in you're behind effectively behind the enemy yeah, mm. yeah. and i tested um, their battle I... to make sure they could pull over. yeah make sure they could make sure they could catch that they will be punished for it um i am going to split uh do i have an idea of what loof's sword is uh you do not he's not famous for it though he's not sorry he's not exalted for it he's not in the mm. Not in the 20s. Um, I will split uh, 11 for Luf, 15 for Pinar. Okay. Um, so I'm going to roll against Pinar first. Okay. Uh, Sir Pinar uh, and... will roll. Success on sword, but not a very high one. It's enough Still to get higher. through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, shall I roll damage or do the other one? Uh, either or. Uh, I'm going to roll damage. Okay. I'll roll horsemanship just in case. Uh, 16, which is his size. Yeah. Uh, but he succeeds on horsemanship. That's okay. all right. Um, second sword, which is going to be lower. Still a critical. Um, I could only get that on a natural twenty in this case. Okay. You run. You Splitting run a your chance. actions works. Yeah. You, you run a chance only if you have a really high <laughs> roll. Mm. Uh, mm. Um, only if you've got a really high uh, skill. Yes. Uh, he does not crit. Yeah. And having crit myself... Oh, God. Ugh, uh, 20 Ooh, damage. 20 total. Uh, but still still the crit. That's awful. How many ones that was that? That sucks. That's yeah. a lot of ones. Only yeah, that's a lot of ones. A lot of twos what it really I thought is. He, I thought you he was like get... goner. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like fully dead. Um... Uh, you can't even feel I did, that I did, of the impact. I did it for you, Summerland people. Mm. I did it for you. Uh, he's going to ride away on that exchange. Uh, and we'll go to the Bourne here. Same time I, I failed my battle. Okay. Uh, so you are locked in with your Swan's opponent. I don't think I actually clicked to see who that was yet. Sir Medoc. Okay. Uh, I am not going to be impassioned on this one. So just regular old sword swing. Oh. Uh oh.
Oh, this oh. might be it. Yep. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that'll, that'll happen. Oh, boy. Oh. Yeah. Well, uh, hang on. This Thomas just rolled really shitty with his critical, really so maybe, maybe no. we're fine. <laughs> How, you know what, what are the odds that could happen twice? Well, it Gareth wouldn't guy. be a Gareth fight without right. him eating a crit to the face. At that's some true, point. yeah. Yes, that's very true. Uh, you're not the Dauntless for no reason. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, that's three sixes and a five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's that's uh, that's four sixes. Uh, four sixes and uh, two fives. Yeah. So, automatically 42. on horse. Oh. Uh, there are very few non-giants who would not be unhorsed by that. Yeah, I think I might even be unconscious. Think, Let me I do think math. Uh, divided by two, horse. though. Yeah, it'd be hub for damage, and then you'd oh, uh, I will give okay. you Bob. I will give you five dollars if you swap Matic and my damage rolls. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think somebody just picked up a horse and threw the entire horse at you. <laughs> <laughs> it was apparently impassioned. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that'll happen. Okay. I mean, you gave the you gave the five minute warning, so this is. A, a I, I was gonna say I, it kind of works out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is actually uh, well timed. I was liking that rather than having you run around the background. The interesting thing for the born is, um, Gareth is not the head technically. Mm. It's Irwin. Mm. So they will no. they will carry on even though the the mastermind running the unit uh, isn't isn't mm. so. Um, as uh, Gareth lands, uh, I guess you take another d6. Let's see if you end up having to be hauled away. Does that put you in unconscious? 25? Uh, no. No. What a beast. Yeah. So <laughs> Gareth managed to drag himself back up Can... from that. But does you probably did Jesus. take a, uh, an actual um, major wound. Wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I took a wound of um, f uh, six, I think was the it was the um the fall is what what caused most of the actual injury uh, you know i'm imagining maybe it was one of those things where the horse fell onto his leg like the horse falls with mm. him and then gets up and he he's like nah, i'm going to take my time getting up on this one <laughs> Gonna take a breather. Down I felt here. something bend in a way that it shouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, as the battle rages on into the evening, the first day is going to end with, um, with a clear and decisive. Like it's the the right side is whittling away at the left, and so it's ruled by, uh, by those that would rule uh, that. Mm. The, right side is the victor, which not everyone's happy with, because, you know, that, that scenario when mm. people can't quit. Uh, we could have won! Yeah, we could have done won, it! Even though they're down to, like, one-third yeah. of, of the numbers of the right. Yeah. I wanted to Here's leave the enough... the thing. As relentless and, like, tenacious and uh, as dedicated as they are, Edric's not going to stop until he fucking dies. And he's not at the moment. <laughs> okay. Uh... I'm going to meet with you guys uh, in between this session to figure out how mm. we uh, solve what, what might be the, the either on screen or off screen, what happens from here. But let's go ahead and close <laughs> this one. Uh, I want to make sure we give Colin a chance to, uh, mm. to part ways with Colin properly here. Thanks very much, man. It was great to have you on. Uh, any this was a lot of fun. Good. I'm glad you liked it. Great. I know it can be awkward playing like an NPC PC kind of thing, but it was uh, great to have you. Shared you landscape, landscape really time. helps onboarding. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's a lot of the same pieces, just how they're arranged, and I'm digging it. Cool. Uh, we're gonna go to Thomas for outros. Hello, I am Thomas, uh, and I've been playing Sir Edric of uh, Winterborn Stoke. Um, it's been a delight and a pleasure, Colin, and loved seeing Sir Gareth. Um, but smarter than Edric, uh, but also perhaps uh, just as lucky when it comes to uh, falling over. Yeah, yeah. And Mark. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. I was just checking out our handy dandy Discord. By the way, did you know I have a Discord? Come check us out. <laughs> 
We got lots of fun <laughs> shit on there, like memes and shit posting, and also messages whenever we go live, as well as relevant new projects that we are doing that sometimes we invite people on our Discord to play in. Um, for example, Open Pendragon, yada yada yada. I'm sure someone will do the spiel at some point. Uh, if not, look at one of our other videos. I'm sure we talk about it. Uh, I have been Mark, aka the Catch Meow. I have my own YouTube channel, uh, the Catch Meow RPG Show, where I run a bunch of RPGs uh, and I do some stuff for a thing called Auroraverse. Bob also does a uh, paid GM service where you can come join in the massive world. Uh, look up Sensei Suplex, he has a whole thing on it. Um, other than that, I have been me playing Sir Florence uh, of Axe. Yeah. Awesome. And Liam. Hello! Uh, I am Liam. I played Sir Virgil of Durnford. Um, it, pretty standard showing from Virgil. He's real intense <laughs> and real forward, but he does not perform as well as he, uh, he, would, he would think. Um, I had a wonderful time. I want to thank Colin again for, for coming by. Uh, it was a wonderful presence to have on the show, and I'm looking forward to next week, whatever it is we're doing for that. <laughs> And uh, just going to close here, taking time, Bob, I run this. I uh, want to give a shout out to Eric Volgaris's Pendragon stream. If you liked uh, what Colin brought to the table, him and uh, Jim Davis do an excellent job at uh, playing through the wonderful world of King Arthur, because they're actually at that stage of the game. Uh, check it out from the beginning, though. They got logs dating back to, I think, pre-COVID. Isn't that when you guys started? Oh yeah, yeah. You actually you get to see in real time as I grow. I started growing my hair when when COVID hit, and I was like, I'm not gonna even think about cutting it until it's over. And we are. Um. And here we are. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, thanks everyone for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Take care. In the year of our Lord, a mournful chill hath settled upon the realm of Britain. For it hath endured a desolation of sixteen winters, bereft of a high king to guide and unite the land. The supreme collegium, entrusted with the sacred duty to anoint a rightful sovereign, hath faltered in its solemn task, lamented the whispers among the people. The nine surviving legates, their voices entangled in a web of protocol and precedence, hath failed to act. Alas, it seemeth the twilight of the Clegium, as a potent body hath descended upon us. Throughout the land, tales abound of tribute paid, but alas, it floweth not into the coffers of a worthy ruler, but rather into the hands of invaders and those ill-fitted to the throne. The noble lords of Logris, once stalwart pillars of our realm, hath been laid low though some secrets lie shrouded in mystery. Duke Ulfius, a survivor of many a harsh winter, findeth himself enshrouded in whispers of a shadowy alliance with the treacherous South Saxon. Duke Cornius, long in hiding, hath emerged from the shadows, and as he journeyed northward with exiles from Hanto, a fateful clash hath erupted at the border of East Saxon. In the wake of many a raid upon Carewind, key strongholds once lost hath been reclaimed. The Irish, like a relentless horde, wage war upon the lands of Gales, swarming in their thousands, the kind of vermin unleashed upon the fields. Norgales, in the throes of despair, offereth tribute to the mountain tribal leaders, known as the Three Cadlus. These Cadlus, in their quest for willing souls to join their cause, dangle the allure of plunder. Yet, little plunder will be found in battling against the Irish. In the heart of Cambria, the kingdoms of Scavalon and Cameliard convene beneath the banners of peace, a meeting graced by the presence of the illustrious kings, Leo de Grants and Nintelliad. King Idris of Cornwall hath need of willing souls, and the castellan of Castle Dimlock in Tintagel doth seek volunteers for his cause to defend against the King of Cornwall. King Cerdic of Wessex, ever the ambitious warlord, 
raiseth a formidable host, and seeketh the aids of mercenaries, a fleet of ships, a foreboding harbinger of strife, hath also been amassed under his banner. In the fabled lands of Salisbury, the great marshal's tournament hath been postponed, for news of turmoil along their western borders hath reached their ears. The castle Woodhouse, a bastion once held by the late Prince Maddock, and a hoary hillfort of Westford Castle, are said to have fallen under the dominion of mercenary armies. Yet the superstitious whisper of faithful in giants, laboring to reclaim what was lost in the days of Uther's invasion of the magician king's summer.